The KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Friday, May 3rd. Man, what what better way? What better way to kick off a Friday with the faces? A, yeah. a British gentleman's social drinking club that happened to also <laughs> play music. Yeah. The faces. <laughs> Uh, and, and what a great illustration of how chemistry is really all it comes down to in rock bands. Because that amazing drummer right there is the guy who ruined The Who. Oh, really? Well, Kenny Jones. Oh, yeah. That's right. it. They replaced Keith Moon with Kenny Jones, and fans were like, what is this? This band <laughs> sucks now. He's not right. And it's like, well, no, he's a fantastic drummer. He's an all-time great drummer. Yeah. Uh, but The Faces was his thing, and The Who wasn't his thing. That's uh, how it goes. I mean, there's, I mean, who replaces Keith Moon? Chemistry is everything in rock bands, and if it's not, then your band kind of sucks. Yeah. Well, you, you know what? If, if there's no chemistry, you got a group. If you got chemistry, you got a band. That's how I see it. Fair enough. Fair hey, enough. Hey, happy Friday. Happy Friday. It's May 3rd. Uh, a big weekend ahead. But before we look ahead, first things first. Candace Wheeler comes in today clad in leather, riding a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. She's got a Judas Priest tattoo now on her forehead. What the hell happened to you last night? Oh, yeah. I was uh, not going to go because I've been, um, yeah, just a lazy butt lately. I'm right. Just, I, it's, I mean, you know, I'm getting older, and I can't go out like I oh, used to during the week. Can't okay. hang, yeah. Can't hang, but you know, I decided, you know, I'm it's the mighty to, Judas Priest of yeah. the Armory. You got to go. Yeah, yeah. So I did. It was really fun. Um, he looked great. Rob looked great. He mm-hmm. sounded great. I bet. Um, you know, it was a great production. Sabaton opened, and they were killer. This is a p- power band from Sweden. Okay. Who sings about wizards and. War and crazy stuff. Um, Li- they sing about lizards? Wizards. Wizards. Wizards and war. <laughs> you just described Black Sabbath, I'm yeah, pretty sure. They're yeah. like the heavier, more storytelling kind of version of Black Sabbath. Jim Morrison, would you call him? He, 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 I know he preferred the Lizard King, but I'd he call was. him the Lizard Wizard. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a nice ring to it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad I went. It was fun to rock out a little bit. and. Yeah, I bet. Oh, that's great. I was sound asleep before they hit the stage, I guarantee it. <laughs> the show came to me last night in the yeah. form of Don sending me videos that I woke up to this morning. He did try to coax me out last night, but I was already had uh, grafted my ass to the couch. Yeah, that'll happen. By the time the uh, call came in, hey man, got a ticket. It was like 8 o'clock. Get on down here for Judas Priest. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Until it turns out I'm paralyzed sure. from the waist down after 8 o'clock. But woke up to a couple of videos, looked pretty good. Rob, what, my God, he's got like 50 pounds. Pounds of leather on. It looks hot under mm-hmm. the lights. It's got to be. It always it's, has been. Yeah, that's his thing. Um, uh, Rob Halford, boy, boy, what a what a gent. I, I've interviewed him a is couple he, times uh, over the years. Seems like, like just he is. just so bright, so funny, so cool. Yeah, wonderfully warm fella. Um, can't find anybody to say a bad word about the guy. No, in in the biz, if you will, just just an all time uh, a titan, if you will, of the industry. Tomorrow uh, is the Kentucky Derby, and it's the 150th Kentucky Derby. Uh, it is the, the longest continuous sporting event. They they haven't taken one off. Um, no? In 150 years. So, uh, yeah, well done, Kentucky. So, in the afternoon, listen, you don't have to pretend to even care. Just make yourself a bad mint julep <laughs> at around, what, Yum. 6, I don't know, 5.30 p.m., 5.45. Just put on the TV for two minutes and enjoy it like the rest of us. No yeah. one knows. I, I grew up in Kentucky. I know people who have spent their entire life at the track. They, they know what they're doing, sort of. Yeah. You get that sheet. They look at the how. How does this guy have mutter? How does he do on the dry clay? How did he do oh, it? Man. How did he do it? Thirteen furlongs. All that horse lingo. And at the end of the day, you're all just guessing. I have won on uh, on May. You know, I've won money at the Kentucky Derby, literally betting blind. Just just um, by the name of the horse. That's how everybody does it. Yeah. It's like you know, it's like March Madness. You're like, well, I I'll, I just bet based on the 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 mascots. <laughs> Kentucky Derby. Find the name of a horse you like. Bet that horse. Have a good time. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Fierceness. Fierceness. Three, going off at three to two odds. That's the big favorite to win the race this year, I'm reading. I will bet against fierceness with all, all right. I have. With with fierceness, you will bet against fierceness. Uh, about $189 million on that one race. I got a buddy who was the uh, the media director at Churchill Downs. Yeah. And uh, and 15 years ago, when I first started doing Sports Talk, we did a whole, I did a series of broadcasts from Louisville over the weekend. And he was with me the night before the race. He's at the track all year long. It's his life. 
And I said, what about this this horse called Mind That Bird? He goes, biggest rat in the race. It's an under... Don't get near it. Not, don't even waste $2 thinking what if. <laughs> Mind That Bird was the greatest underdog to ever win the Kentucky Derby the next day. <laughs> and I said on the air, I'm like, I'm going to put $1,000 on Mind That Bird. And it literally would have been like a million. It was oh, crazy. I, I go with I, the gut. Yeah, Mind mind That Bird. So look for, the, look for the horse's name tomorrow that reminds you of Mind That Bird or that makes right. absolutely no sense and, uh, and throw some money on there. It's a two-minute race. It's two minutes of your day. Yeah. You could enjoy it. There's something else that's happening tomorrow that's 20 hours and 22 minutes. And if you're interested in that, two things. One, you are a all capital letters nerd. And two... <laughs> That's really all there is. There's only one. You're a capital letters nerd. I'll tell you what we're talking about here in just a few minutes. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line. 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. This is, this is, this is the KQ yes. Morning Show for Friday, May the 3rd. Let's go west. Let's go west to Hollywood. Mike Evans, Hollywood Report. Hey, good morning, Minneapolis, St. Paul. I uh, love them Timberwolves. I'm excited about the Kentucky Derby coming up. I mean, it's just a it's just a great time to be a Friday. That's all I have to say. Also, a lot of movie news and a reminder, Marcus Theater makes this report possible every day. And there are a lot of good movies playing at Marcus Theater. I'll tell you about the new one that I will review in just a minute. And don't forget, every Tuesday is $6 Tuesday at Marcus Theater's any movie. For just six bucks. You know, I, I hate I hate being right when the story is bad. But 72 hours ago, right here on your show, Steve, I reported the Britney Spears had completely lost it. That she was out of her mind. And I said, it's very serious. Well, less than 24 hours after I told you that, after I told you that, police and ambulances were called to the Chateau Marmont Hotel where Brittany had gotten into a huge physical fight with her boyfriend while also screaming and threatening hotel guests and hotel employees. She also appeared to have some injuries, possibly self-inflicted. Really a sad story. Steve, I know you know, but maybe some of our listeners don't. The Chateau Marmont Hotel is where John Belushi came to his end by an overdose of drugs. Hey, it is Movie Review Friday, all happening at Marcus Theaters, and despite some crybaby Johnny Depp fans upset about one little line in the new movie Fall Guy about Depp and Amber Heard, Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt's new film, Fall Guy, is one of the best movies of the year. I mean, there's, I love it because there's something for everybody. There's action, there's comedy, there's romance, there's thrills, and more. Fall Guy, rated PG-13, two hours long, four stars. And also playing at all the Marcus Theaters, Unsung Heroes is back. The movie Abigail, still playing. Mystery of the Ungentlemanly Warfare, still playing. Those three movies I also gave four stars to, so some really good movies are out there. Hey, I'm really excited about a movie called Encore. That started pre-production this week. So it's about some old, old retired, retired actors who are living at the same retirement home who decide to put on a show for the other residents with hilarious results. Yet it's also very touching. Stars Jeremy Irons, Glenn Close, Don Johnson, Henry Winkler, and some other oldies but goodies. The first time I met Henry Winkler was years and years ago. I found an old picture, and I posted it on my website, evansradio.com. That was a long time ago. Yeah, that's that's a mustache on my face, all right. Check it out, evansradio.com. And our country has been bombarded by protests all week. And there will probably be some protests next week in England. But for a much different reason. Uh, Some Englishers are planning to protest at the hotel Prince Harry is staying at, telling him to get out of England and go back to America where he belongs. Somehow I doubt that Meghan will make the trip. Uh, No surprise there. Is surprising, however, that Prince Harry staying at a hotel and not at one of the royal palaces, but there's a family feud going on. 
And by the way, it's come on, boys and girls, sing along. It's Aloha Friday. Don't work till Monday. We're going to play today. Aloha Friday. Have a great weekend. Lily Yokalani, Lani, Lani, okay. Yeah, look who in the cock and the and hoi, 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 ho. I think it's just adorable that you play along drums, tapping along. Steve Gorman. I there can't help myself. I cannot help myself. I get excited. <laughs> what are you kidding me? If I if I had a chance to back down Ho, the answer would be yes. I take what I can get around here. Let's look back. Okay, check this out. In 1989, on this day, uh, what sounds like a great spy movie went down in Stockholm, Sweden. Okay, take this. Take just picture this story. Uh, a, a young man from the Soviet Union wants to defect. It's still again 1989 makes a few phone calls knows a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy he's in stockholm sweden um he's told go to a shopping mall on your day off from your job and meet this person long story short a a young kid a 20 year old kid follows the advice goes to a mall sees a man who says get in that car over there they run into the car they're being chased by kgb agents as they tear away in this car they go into the swedish countryside for three days they change hotels every six hours using aliases everywhere they go and then they get on a plane and that plane lands in buffalo and the kid's name is alexander mcgillney what <laughs> the Soviet soccer uh, hockey player oh. Alexander McGilney oh, for the right. Buffalo Sabers? I remember that's watching, how yeah. he got here. Defected after a world championship game in Sweden and literally met some Americans from the Sabres at a mall. They <laughs> ran. They were being chased on foot and in a car by KGB officials and got away. And then hit out in the countryside for a few days, and then he shows up in Buffalo, and they're like, hey, we got a guy from the Soviet Union playing for the Sabres now. <laughs> he was 20 years old. That's an amazing story. I mean, that's How's such the movie a not part, been made yet? I, right? I did see this in a documentary as part of a documentary about that Russian team mm-hmm. uh, that came out just a few years ago. It's out there on YouTube. I, I know, I, it's incredible. That I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's fantastic. And you, just, uh, you set yourself apart from sports executives mm-hmm. when you're smuggling people out of the Soviet <laughs> Union back when it was a thing. To oh do it. my God! He was the first. He changed yeah. the face of uh, yes, he did. of hockey for sure. Because the the, in the you know in the years that followed, he's uh, he's in the World Championships. He's playing with Pavel Bure. You know all these great Soviet players, Russian players that later made a name in the NHL. But none of that would have happened if he hadn't done what he did that day in Stockholm on this day in 1989. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, Candace, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. Friday, May the 3rd. Good morning. Happy weekend, one and all. Yeah, baby. May the 4th. Tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I'm not no. going to say May the 4th be with you. Damn it, I just said you it. You said it. Uh, May the 4th tomorrow, Star Wars, Kentucky Derby, uh, Minnesota Timberwolves in the second round oh, of the NBA playoffs. Right. Kickoff to- that, that tips off, I should say, tomorrow night. I will be sitting in front of a television, watching it and yelling. I'm very excited about that series. Um, uh, Bill Simmons, who's a uh, you know the the uh, giant in sports media, um, I, I was listening to him on the way in this morning, and he said if there's a team built in a lab to challenge the Denver Nuggets, it would be this year's Minnesota Timberwolves. And I just thought that's a perfect way to say it. If anybody can beat Denver, oddly enough, it's this year's Timberwolves. So. If you're not on board yet, trust me when I say it's a legit, honest to God, really, really, really good, potentially great basketball team right here in Minnesota. You, know, you listen to these guys talk at press conferences after that, you know, after they swept the Suns, they think they can beat them. Guarantee. I mean, they they're do. bringing it. They're yeah. a lot of young, cocky. Yep. A um, team with a hell of a lot of talent. The best 22-year-old basketball player on planet Earth right now yep. plays for the Timberwolves, Anthony Edwards. Yeah. He has taken the leap uh, in the la- in this season and especially in that first postseason uh, series. He showed, oh, no, he okay, he's going to do all those things you have to do. Yeah. He's committed himself uh, to a level that very few people are able to, and he is a very, very special player. So that's exciting. Sunday is, of course, Cinco de Mayo. Um, and at some point along the way, I, there's a chance I'll get myself a burrito, a couple tacos, a margarita, maybe, maybe a few. Uh, that's just that's a normal Sunday for me anyway. So yeah. you add Cinco de Mayo to it, done deal. I'm going to taco up out of the Twins game. So the Socks are in town. The oh, that's red, right. That's the red right. ones, the red type Socks, yeah. are in town, and the Twins trying to extend that ten game winning streak with the rally sausage. I'm going to put eyes on the rally sausage. Of course, they got to win tonight. They've got a night game with the Red Sox in town. They've got the Saturday. Wait, game. Is, you know what? And Sunday's going to be. A 
a gorgeous day. Not I a cloud in the sky. Come on high over, 60s. Man. I, you know what? I might very well do that. Yeah. That sounds like a that sounds like a fine way to spend a, sad, a Sunday uh, no, a Sunday uh, afternoon. Target Field Taco out there and yeah. uh, I don't know if they have a cerveza or something we can uh, yeah. wash down. Want to thank Hoffman Weber Construction. I'm going to be hanging out there with some mm-hmm. of our KQ listeners for that game on Sunday afternoon. And yeah, Rally Sausage. Let's go. <laughs> Let's sweep the socks. So, Cinco de Mayo, of course, not hugely widely celebrated in Mexico. <laughs> Everyone in America, uh, the, the, the common assumption is always it's their Independence Day. No, it's no. not. They're celebrating a victory over the French in 1862. <laughs> I know everyone. it's hard to believe that the French lost the battle. I know. But they did. You know, well, that's what we do here in America. We're the melting pot, right? We mm-hmm. take it, and that includes taking your uh, precious religious holidays, or in this case, it would be a, a win in a big battle. I'm thinking of St. Patrick's Day. Of course. Which in, in Ireland is a, a big Bit like Thanksgiving, it's more of a sedate. Mm-hmm. It's got a uh, you know everybody gets together. They go to church, of course, celebrate yeah. St. Patrick's. They have a big meal together. Yep. Maybe they drink too much, but uh, we've Americanized it and turned it into one big, uh, fantastic cel- drinking celebration. Mm-hmm. And it's been a couple of months. We needed something to fill in here before we get to <laughs> Memorial Day That's and right. then off to the summer drinking, where you know every day is a is a party. So yeah, we're just taking Cinco de Mayo and. Appropriating it for a good time and bad decisions. We're having a we're having a a, a little bit of fun with it. I, I I'm just going to throw this out there. Stop by. Um, still, Rosemary and I are still very much just trying places out. You know, like you see a hole in the wall bar. Yeah. Let's go get a let's get one drink in there and see if we like the vibe. Perfect. Dro- we were out in uh, St. Louis Park and saw a little hole in the wall, just a little burrito taco joint. Uh, yeah. It's called Mexico City, and we went in. Outstanding, just great. Oh, all right, and I'm it did, didn't look nothing, nothing about it said this will be great, but it's like it was like in a little strip mall. Like let's just try it. Perfect. Went in, guy couldn't have been nicer, and he's like, "Hey, Sunday, man, come out Sunday, Cinco de Mayo." And I was like, "You're on." So between <laughs> that and going to your Twins game, and then well, actually, I got to get Rosemary to the airport. I got I got a big I got a busy Sunday. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about Something it, I got I got getting a, done. I got a stacked up Sunday. Yeah, uh, but that. That twins game might have to be the one that I do. That's yeah. that sounds like a that sounds like a pretty oh, good time. It's gonna be nice weather. Yeah, that's I will. Good. I will walk into Target Field and I will happily say, "Please just take my money. I just let me <laughs> let me try those tacos. Let me try all the new food. I'm happy to do that." La um, Tapatia is the big deal at Target Field. Okay, and they have a restaurant in Roseville that's amazing, but they they're the best. Say that again they, for me, please. La Tapatia. La Tapatia. And it's fun they, to say. Yeah, they have the best tacos. All right. All yeah. right. Fair enough. Well, then we've got a, we've got a Sunday scheduled out here. That's fantastic. I like having an itinerary. Yeah. I like an agenda. <laughs> I like and a find day out what's going to get done, what's not going to get done. You might just punt and go with a yeah. completely different game plan. Well, it's surprising because uh, guys are not usually planners. So, oh no. I, well, no. I didn't say I like to plan. I like to be given a plan. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I like to that I like to sense. I like to pack, but I don't like to book the trip. You know what I mean? That's yeah. there's a difference. Lay out all your clothes. I will figure out where the how to pack it in the luggage, and then how the luggage goes in the car. But as far as picking a destination, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> right. Whatever. Um, uh, when people say, "Man, do you miss life on the road?" The answer is always the same: No. But I do miss waking up every day with a piece of paper under my door that tells me what's <laughs> happening all day long. Isn't that comforting? The day sheet on tour. That's the best yeah. part of touring. Is somebody else just says, "By the way, here's." What what you're doing all day long yeah. and it's like i love nothing more than checking off a list great i go i don't go into the grocery store without a list why would i go through the do rest you ever of my- deviate from your list or is that very it? rarely okay. i try not to it's just chiseled in marble for you the only thing i will buy at the grocery store that's not on my list is something that's right next to something on my list you know, like, what? I'm saying, it, it, if I if I deviate from the list, if I okay. buy something that's not on the list, it's because it's right next to something that is on the list. Ah, right. You know, like, I'm going to get sliced jalapenos. And then I noticed, oh, that hot sauce looks good, too. It's right, right next door. Yeah. But I won't be like, I won't look down an aisle and realize there's nothing on that aisle that's on my list, but I'm going to walk down it anyway. Never happens. Yeah, no, no. No, no me either. But that's, they always Targeted seem to put strikes. those... Those ice cream drumsticks in an aisle that I always walk down. There's something well, frozen that I need down there. Sure, sure, yeah. And they put those right between me and whatever it is I need. So No, my, my grocery runs are always targeted strikes. Get in, get out. And in fact, <laughs> w- Rosemary will tell you, the number of times we will be going to just pick up a few things, and she still has to say it because I will be on my way to drop her off, and she'll say, park 
the car and come in with me. Because in my mind, it's like, no, I'm dropping you. I'm going to do one loop in the parking lot, and then you come right back out. It's like, I, like no, if I park and go in with you, then it just takes longer. And she's yeah. like, what else do you have to do? And I'm like, that's not the point. Yes. I'd rather have 10 minutes of what should we do next than spend that 10 minutes together in the store. <laughs> I, I just know. It's like, get in, get out, get in, get out. Like It's like a mini, it's putt-putt yeah, golf. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you. Just finish Stay the in hole. the car. I, you just slow me down. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. It's just, that's life. Um, one thing about, uh, here's here's something that, that we hear stories about a good bit. Um, and it's never cool. And that's that. well, there's a lot of online scams. There's a lot of all kinds of scams out there, but specifically so many that target the elderly. Uh, oh, my, mo- yeah. my mom had a situation uh, in the last few months where she clicked on a link and all of a sudden she thought she was in a jackpot, you know, a hot box situation and she got out of it. But yeah. it's real easy for anybody to fall prey to this, but especially people who didn't grow up with the Internet, who didn't grow up online. And as they're getting, you know, it's it's 25 years into that now, but I'm saying an awful awful lot of people are still falling victim because there are no shortage of douchebags out there who are looking to uh, fall victim. A crazy story from the Dakota County Sheriff's Office. A a detective from that office who deals with online fraud scam stuff walked literally in real life, not online, into an actual scam situation. It's a wild story. I believe we've got some audio from Fox 9 explaining this. this And while there are a variety of scams consumers can fall victim to, gift card draining was among the most common last year. And just this week in Dakota County, it was a detective from the sheriff's office who stopped one of these crimes while it was happening. And he did it on his lunch break. Fox 9's Courtney Godfrey joining us now with details of this story. Courtney? Dakota County Detective Ryan Olson has made a career out of fighting cybercrime, but his latest bust came on his lunch break. I told her that she's being scammed, and you could just kind of see the relief, like, really? He says he was in Walmart when he saw an older woman on the phone pacing the gift card section. Just seeing how she was hesitant on uh, what type of gift card to get made me kind of think something might be wrong. He recognized it as a common scam where criminals will claim to be the government or tech support or even a family member, and that in order to avoid something terrible from happening, the victim needs to purchase gift cards and tell them the barcode over the phone. In this case, he says by the time he intervened, she had already been to another store and purchased $750 worth of cards. So I called the 1-800 number, I talked to the customer service agent, and right away he's like, we get these all day. The money's probably gone. I said, well, can we check? And luckily for her, it was still there. Detective Olson says the scammers target senior citizens and are usually calling from Europe or West Africa. He says the best thing to do when someone calls asking for payment or personal information is to hang up, tell a family member or friend, and call the company they claim to be from directly to see if the call was legitimate. I mean, it feels good because we're not letting the scammers win in this one. Wow, uh, yeah. the, the gift card thing. Um, I, I, it's just, it's. It, this just grinds my gears to such an extent. Yeah. I met a guy once, like oh, probably 30 years ago uh, in Vegas, and he was a, a friend of a friend of a friend, and he was talking about how he had this great scam for against older people with vitamin supplements and stuff it was like infomercials back pre-internet but they would yeah. put these infomercials up and one 800 number and it was just sugar pills and it was targeted at older people on you know and he's late, bragging late, about this? And this guy was telling me all about it and he was Did like kill him he said he literally this is a guy that i just met and it, like i said a friend of a friend it was like i i knew a guy who knew a guy that knew him so you know it's just like oh, yeah. oh hey what do you do yeah, right. and then a couple drinks in people, a couple yeah. drinks in and sitting around the blackjack table and then we go off to go, go sit at the bar and then he's like yeah man he goes i did seven million dollars last year just me and there's nine of us in the company and i looked and he was and i go wait 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 this is your this is not a joke this is literally what you do and he's mm. laughing and he goes mm. he goes hey man the fbi was at my house it was covered live on tv it was hilarious he didn't have any concerns wow and he that's goes, what and, uh, that's what amoral looks like yeah it's right that's exactly what it was it's yeah. not immoral it's Amoral. Yeah, it's not just the lack of it's, none. It's, yeah. zero. That's why you call the beekeeper. 
This Man. is what the beekeeper is about. I haven't watched the movie, by the way, but I watched the trailer like six times. <laughs> uh-huh. And I know that Mrs. Cosby gets scammed. Yeah. And then she feels so bad about it that she, I believe she kills herself. Mm. I think that's what uh. happens in the movie. And Jason Statham is her neighbor, the beekeeper. And he tracks these guys down. And it's these uh, scumbag douchebags you're talking about. They're all excited. Hey, we drained her bank account. Woo, high five. Oh, my God. And I don't know how much it was based in reality. And the beekeeper starts kicking ass. So, so Mrs. Cosby, you mean Felicia Rashad, the yes, actress. Yes, that's who. I so always forget So she tapped into her real life experience being scammed <laughs> yes, by... Right. <laughs> I thought this guy was a great guy. Yeah, yeah okay. Maybe she wrote the screenplay. Sense. Maybe she pitched it. Yeah, I don't no know. No kidding. Uh, uh, but, but no, there there is a... There, there's, there's not a special room. There's a special... Uh, duplex in hell for these people yeah um, no doubt. uh get you know getting online and i you know my identity was stolen in 2017 or 18 um uh, one day i opened the mail and there's a letter from sunglass hut thanking me for opening an account and i'm like an account at sunglass hut <laughs> and then the next one is an account it's like belk's department store hey thanks for the and I'm like, um, what's happening here? Mm-hmm. Somebody got my social, got my email, got my birthday, got my phone number, and they were off to the races. Yeah. And it was a year and a half of me just diligently flagging things, going to the FTC website, entering them, thousands and thousands of thousands of dollars against my, which I ended up, I didn't have to pay. I mean, I was not on the hook for any of it. Because I jumped on it very fast, but it was dozens of things opened with all my information. Yeah. Before I and you know, first thing I do is lock it down so you can't find that stuff anymore. But it's still out there on the dark web. I get emails every month saying your social popped up in a site on the dark web. Someone's <sighs> trying to use it every damn day. They just sell their information. And so, long story short, I had a real inconvenient. My credit score went down like overnight. Like I just lost a hundred points on my or whatever it was because yeah. all these bills suddenly didn't get paid. But then ultimately, it all got cleared up. But my point is, it, you know, you don't have to even be an active. You don't even have to click a link to get someone to make your life a living hell. Oh no! For somebody that's targeting. Uh, uh, especially elderly citizens with these kind of things. Man, I that mean, just grinds my gears. Detective Olsen is the beekeeper, just not yeah. as violent. You know, he didn't rip not anyone's quite as head violent. off. But uh, she's awfully, awfully lucky. I mean, what a great stroke of luck. But it, today it's going to happen to elderly mm-hmm. people right here in Minnesota. And yeah, it drives you crazy because they're out of the country. Yep. They're out of reach. You know, we can't get oh, yeah. to them. So we've got to protect ourselves and our elderly people. And yeah, it's... Uh, uh, you know, there's being scammed and then there's doing it to yourself because I'm looking at the story that we have coming up. And would you rather, I mean, would you feel better about yourself if you were scammed or if you just frivolously spent money on something that uh, you felt sick about? You just absolutely regretted. Uh, okay, well, well, my my immediate impulse answer to that is I'd rather be mad at me than somebody else. All right, well, let's lay this story down and then we'll play that game here. Um <laughs> <laughs> Before we play the game for concert tickets a little bit later on this morning. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show for Friday, May the 3rd. Good morning. We were mm-hmm. talking earlier. Uh, you asked me the question, would you rather be scammed or would you rather blow it all yourself? And yeah, I, on something really stupid that yeah, you regret. You yeah, know? yeah, sure, sure, sure. My my thought was, um, I'd rather be mad at myself than someone else. It's easier to just... Yeah. Uh, but then sometimes I'm like, well, no, it's really hard to give yourself a break. You know, you beat yourself up more. But yeah. um, I, I just know that if you're mad at yourself, you can do something about it. Right. If you're mad at somebody else, you just got to get over it because you can't change other people. You can change yourself. That said, um, here's an odd here's an odd one. Not the kind of headline you see every day. And it involves a Catholic priest in Pennsylvania who is 51 years old. His name is Lawrence Kozak. And Larry, as I like to call him, <laughs> uh, apparently is a big fan of mobile games on his phone. Oh, okay. I thought when you went I, with I, Priest, I well, thought this oh, could be I, scandalous. But, I was going right, to say. So I, this I, sounds I, rather tame. I know to a lot of ears, they perked up and were like, oh God, another oh, yeah. one of these oh, stories. Here we go. No, he's a big fan of uh, specifically Mario Kart <gasps> Tour. All right. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? You and know? Candy Crush. Mm-hmm. I'm not familiar, but I've heard of it. 
Um, he likes to uh, play games on his mobile phone. That's yeah, pretty much what's yeah. happening. He's got a lot of downtime. Um, and apparently, priest, what yeah. he also does is he purchases the quote power ups. Like, you know, you're playing your game and then oh. you want a faster car. It's like, well, here's seventy nine cents and you can power up. It's called pay for play. Dollar thirty nine, whatever. You know, yeah. you want you want more bananas on Candy Crush. I don't, I don't even. I'm, my kids used to play Candy Crush, right. but I don't even know what the hell it is. Uh, it you looked, didn't give them the credit card to play. It looked like a fruity <laughs> Tetris to me. Maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but um, so anyway. Uh, but here's where here's where Larry got into trouble. He was using a credit card that's tied to an Amazon account that uses church funds. Whoopsie! And he powered up, power upped, I should say, over forty thousand dollars worth. <laughs> <laughs> 40 grand in oh, mobile game upgrades. Looks like we're not going to be sending uh, food to the Latin countries this year. Uh, 40, Bless me, geez. Father. It's been six months since my last confession. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Ah! Ah! I can't believe like, I didn't hit that mushroom. I wanted to get my car faster <laughs> and faster and faster. Sorry, what was oh. this you were saying? All right, so I, I yeah, unfortunately, I can kind of relate, except that I didn't extort money. I did mm-hmm. it to myself, and this is what I was talking and referencing earlier, being scammed. I scammed myself. It's these pay-to-play games, which are becoming very popular. Back in the day, you just bought a game, and you played it, and then went, wow, I played this game mm-hmm. for 41 hours this week. It's got a stat there. It shows me I'm wasting my life, but you only spent maybe somewhere between 10 to maybe $90 for the game, okay. but now with pay-to-play. If you really want to amp up and get the good stuff, like I'm playing. Oh, so you've waded into this thicket. Uh, It's World of Tanks. And you can just play for free against other <laughs> moron geeks. World like of yourself. tanks. World of tanks. Like like, man. like tanks. Like yeah, in tanks. battlefield tanks. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm not mispronouncing tanks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's like, world of tanks. I thought we were talking Irish stuff here. Oh, tank tanks. Yeah, tanks for the uh, for the good times. But no. So and and you get in there and you're like, oh, you just play around for free, but. If you buy better shells, tank shells, you can start, I mean, then you can start killing Oh, well, then you're kicking ass. You're kicking ass. So I'll just buy look, five bucks. I'm going to buy yeah. five bucks. Oh, but another five bucks. Well, these things really work out. Another five bucks. Well, now I need some more armor because they're buying the shells as well. In one month, I spent $400. Oh, come on. On this stupid ass World of Tanks video game. <laughs> With these pimple popper losers in oh their my basements. God. I was That's one great. of them. 400 freaking dollars. I remember looking back and starting to add it up and looking at my bills to PlayStation and going, oh my God. I could have fed a family of four for a month. Oh, oh, oh man. Of what I played for that. And I did it to myself. I was just sick about it. I signed off, deleted the game, the whole thing, just got away from it. I can't go back. I couldn't even get on now and play the free version because, you know, I've been to the mountaintop. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's not so much a scam, but it's a fish hook with a with a nice piece of bait on it. I, you just couldn't resist. I did it to myself, and yeah. I have been. Someone uh, got my credit card one time. Like, you, you started seeing uh, uh, yeah. charges to different places. Yep. Someone bought a pair of shoes in Oklahoma City, and then there was a charge for flowers in New Jersey and, you know, like $400 worth of flowers. And, and so I started looking at all these charges. That felt bad, but trust me, brother. When you spend four hundred dollars playing a video game in one month, <laughs> that feels worse. It's, I can't wow. even believe I'm saying this on the air. I'm going to the Dirty Rotten Biker Festival tomorrow, and they're going to look at me like you that's, moron. That's pretty rough. Candace, do you play games on your phone? Nope. Nope. Oh, okay, fair enough. Good for you. <laughs> but I don't know. I've been tempted to. But- I downloaded the new Pokemon game because I was such a Pokemon person mm-hmm. growing up. But um, I just can't get into it. Okay, good. Yeah. Well then, well then, keep stay right there. <laughs> stay in your lane. Uh, Six five one nine eight nine is the KQ Talk and Text Line, and I believe Candice, we have a caller. Yeah, we had Greg from Prior Lake. Greg, good morning, sir. Good morning, gentlemen and gentlewomen. What's happening, brother? <laughs> uh, I've been scammed recently, but uh, let me go to the first time. I I think I called you before, and I was pronounced dead. Oh, I remember this I phone call, Greg. Security department, yeah. and then it escalated into, uh, I had to close my, my, I got letters from my bank account, my pension. That's right. Um, oh. Everything, and it, it was just hell on wheels. Now, how did you end up dead in the eyes of the government? <clears throat> you know, that's what I was trying to figure out, and uh, I was supposedly was on the master death list. 
Well, our and government so, has a master so death that list. Said, uh, all your imp- if you're on the death list, all your personal information goes out there. Oh, I have close my bank accounts, uh, get a hold of all my creditors, <sighs> and so forth and so on. And it, it turned out, uh, and, and actually, <laughs> I got a letter from the IRS this year saying that they could not uh, proceed filing my income tax returns because uh, I was dead. Well, so it, I mean... It kind of came back <laughs> to haunt me, but I just kind of let it go, and it's like, I'll deal with it next year. Mm. But my recent scam was uh, I was trying to cancel a Netflix account, and um, I called this number on that I, I got I got off my phone, uh, to call uh, Netflix customer service, mm-hmm. and I called up customer service. I thought was customer service, and uh, the gentleman on the other line uh, was telling me that, oh, you know, you got uh, someone that's going into your account, and they're trying to uh, charge five hundred dollars on your account, and he just kept on walking me through these procedures on my phone to open up a cash app, and. Uh, so Ooh. forth and so on, and he wanted me to, he asked me if there was a Target or a Walgreens nearby, and I oh. said, yeah, I have both of them, and he said, well, which is closer, and I said, the Walgreens, and he said, well, what I want you to do is go up there and get a, one of those uh, cards. No. And yeah. so I'm sitting there thinking, you know, in my gut, this just don't sound right, yeah. and uh he says, well, you have to do this, sir, you know, uh, because if you don't do this, you're going to go through with, with this purchase and there's no way you can he, I mean he put on a good spiel and uh, I said okay I'll, I'll go up there and I'll call you back he goes no I'll stay here you can put some pants on and it's like how did he know I didn't have any pants on I still had my pajamas on so he was probably looking at me through my phone also Whoa! Whoa! No, no, so no. I get up you know he's with me online uh, the Walgreens is only about uh, half a mile up the road from me and he wanted me to buy this particular card. So I'm, and he said, just tell him it's going to be for uh, personal use. It's not a gift. I'm thinking, you know, this just, I tell him, this just sounds like a bunch of BS. No, sir, no, sir. This is, you know, all legit and blah, blah, blah. And so I get in there and I still just got this kind of feeling. It's like, don't do this. Don't do this. And I'm on the rack and I'm, I found the card that he wanted me to purchase. And I walked up to the uh, cashier, and she asked me if, if this is a gift or for personal use. And I'm standing there with a dumb look on my face, which I probably had. She's looking at me, and I'm kind of stuttering, and I'm going, well, you know, I got this phone call. She's shaking her head back and forth. Mm-hmm. No, don't wow, do wow, it. Wow. Don't uh-huh. do it. And I said, okay, I'm not doing this because I just feel it in my gut. So I gave her the card back, and I... By the time I got home, I'm trying to call my bank up because he had already taken $200 out of my bank account. <sighs> and, I, and he still had control of my phone. I couldn't dial out of my phone. Uh, that's awful. And I need I a beekeeper. my wife's phone to you know, get a hold of my bank. Well, bottom line is uh, I got reimbursed for the $200. And I had to close my bank account, get a hold of all my um, creditors. Holy freaking uh, name here. Auto pay. Mm. Yep. And it yep. was just hell on wheels. And I'm, I felt just so angry at myself. It's like, you know, I'm the one that is always, you know, high. And it's like, I tell my wife, you're going to get scammed. You're going to get scammed. Well, right. here, I got scammed. It could happen to anyone. Do you know how they got control of your phone? He led me through all these apps on my phone. Open up your bank account. I said, well, I don't do that on my phone. I'll have to go on my laptop and do it because I don't do any of this on my phone. And he walked me through it to open up yeah. my Wealth Fargo account, my cash app. I would never have a cash app. I don't do anything on my phone. And this son of a bitch, you know, I'm sitting there. And it's early in the morning. And it's like, God, mm-hmm. I don't know. How, you know, just it is above my reasoning why I even 
fell for that. Mm-hmm. Well, you look back on it now, but in the moment when this is happening, that that rush that we get, like when I uh, and Steve went through this uh, much more severely, even when you figure out that your identity has been stolen or you've lost some money, there's a rush of adrenaline. It's like being in a first responder situation, a, a car accident or something where it goes terribly wrong. We have these, you know, we don't act. You're almost in a, a version of shock mm-hmm. when it happens, of course, in hindsight. But yeah, you talked about your gut and Anytime the oh. gut checks in. And now we know that, yeah, if someone's asking you to, the part where he asks you to put your pants on, right there, the phone is going out the, I don't know what, I'm Man. dropping it in the toilet or something. And yeah, that is. This came back to me after I came back home, and I'm sitting there thinking about how this all unfolded. Yeah. And I'm thinking, boy, oh, you're an idiot, or Greg. It's like, you know, he, and I'm thinking, how does he know I got my pajamas on? I got to change pants. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's watching, probably watching me. Son of a man! God I, dang it! That's a that is a that's a rough one to hear, man. Uh, thanks for sharing that story I, I, with I us, though. That's a tough one. Going, it was harder for me to prove I was alive. <laughs> yeah, uh, unbelievable. And I'm, I'm looking for a death certificate somewhere from you know a, a funeral parlor, and I'm going to you know just. I'm punching my Googling my name in, trying to fake, figure out where I'm dead, who, where my death certificate is. Someone's got a life insurance policy on yeah. me or something. It's like, so it was crazy. Just, holy hell. That's nuts. Hey, thank you for the time and for sharing that story, man. That's a, that's a pretty unforgettable yeah. right there. Thank you. Yeah, people got to hear it, right? Yep. Thanks, Greg. Um, yeah, just like the uh, elderly lady that we played the story earlier this morning in Dakota County, mm-hmm. a detective that investigates cyber crimes just like this happened to be standing in the aisle while she was, like Greg, shopping for these gift cards. Uh, uh, like Greg, confused. Yep. He knew how to read the signs. Had he not been there, this old lady was already out $700, would have been mm-hmm. out more, and and it happens, they say, every day. This lady at the cash register has seen it before. And when she saw Greg going, I, I, I don't know, she's like, yeah, no, don't do it. Uh, this one's being exposed. There's so many different scams out there and different ways to get to you. 651-989-ROCK is the KQ Talk and text line. Feel free to offer either a call or a text or both. Candace, is there another caller? Missy from New Prague. Missy, good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're great, thanks. What have you got for us? Say it, I'm going to call this my near miss. But, okay. Uh, I had just gotten some charges that I noticed, and so I had to get a new card after I called it all in. And so I was already on high alert when I got a phone call from Amazon, and I could hardly understand this guy. He's from the very, very southwest of our continent. Mm-hmm. And uh, he uh, kept telling me that I had this massive charge on my Amazon, and he wanted to make sure that somebody didn't scam me. So he played the protector, wanted me to get on my computer, and he needed information from my computer to help me to permanently block anybody. I said, how does that have to do with, you know, anything (laughs) with my Amazon account? You know, and there I admitted I had one, so I was a little, uh, it was an afterthought. But anyway... Um, I had played the role out. I knew I was getting scammed at this point, and so I just kind of played the dumb old lady, and he got really frustrated with me after about probably 15 minutes, Oof. and he ended up hanging up on me. I got a phone or Well, before that, I actually said, you know, you should feel bad about this, you know, and knowing that, you know, a lot of people are religious, I just said, you know, what does God think about this? You know, what would Jesus do? And he hung up the phone on me, and anyway, so... I got a phone call and probably about five times a day, every day mm. for about two weeks mm. from different phone numbers. I couldn't turn it in because it was always a different phone number. Yeah. I got harassed by, I'm sure it was this guy. I got harassed by him for probably two <sighs> weeks, almost three. I was almost going to change my phone number and they finally quit. Oh, man. But I knew I must have struck a bone because. Yep. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, yeah. they, they, they have new, there's new things they can, um, you know, just answering your phone. Um, they can access information right. from your phone. Boom, just, just, just you get a call. You don't recognize the number. If you just answer it, uh, you can you can be hacked. Um, so yeah, yeah. The, the lesson as always: if you don't know that number, if the, if, it, no if it's real, it they'll leave a voicemail. And half the voicemails you get probably don't matter anyway. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's a tough true one. Enough, I mean, Amazon's not going to call you and say, hey, you got this really big charge. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly you know, right. Mm-hmm. It was a live and learn. That was it. Well, good good for you. Like you said, you uh, a, a, a near miss right there. Thanks for the call and thank you for listening. <sighs> yeah, I mean, that's a violation. I, you know, where I was talking about wasting my money on World of Tanks. 
uh, you know, doing it to myself, one of these pay-for-play games. Mm-hmm. But now that I listen to Missy and Greg here, and I'm thinking about that lady in Dakota County, I think, yeah, that would that would drive me crazier. No one, it's like, you know, your home being burgled. It's like any, you know, the, the, the feeling of being a victim, that helplessness. And in these cases, because they are overseas, you're never going to get to them. Yeah. The beekeeper isn't real. That's not going to happen. And so all you can do is protect yourself because you're not going to see any justice ultimately in the end. Um, You know, uh, our daughter uh, sent us a screenshot, me and Rosemary, yesterday. Sent us a screenshot, and it's of a text that she got, and it says... Chase, like Chase Bank. Yeah. Chase, colon. Yeah. Your card was recently charged $771.52 at Moxie, California, April 30th. If you don't authorize this, click here. If you you know, if you don't authorize this report, click here, link, to decline it now. And she said, this is spam, right? And like a couple things, thankfully, our college-age daughter has paid attention to all the things she's supposed to do. Yep. The word don't doesn't have an apostrophe in it. It's just mm-hmm. D-O-N-T yep. in the text. We love Learned and, this in cyber training. And right away, we said, and Rosemary just said, yeah, that's spam. Don't worry about it. And I said, wait, do you have a Chase card? <laughs> and she goes, no. I'm like, well, then why? You know, right. Okay, first things first, <laughs> when did you get a credit card? And secondly, you know, it's just like, yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. So, um, yeah, thank. I, so so for now, anyway, the kids are all right. All right. Well, are we going to we gonna play a game show now, or are we going to roll on here with let's, our... Let's get a game show in. Let's give away some tickets. Uh, tomorrow is May the 4th. Uh, Steve, big fan, all morning long, he's just been what Candace and I. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th. We're like, all right, Steve, we get it. You're really... <laughs> into this thing. No, so, no, you don't understand. It was his dad. <laughs> it's his father is Darth Vader, dude. How many times what? do I have to tell you? One wow. of my favorite stories is my brother walking into that movie. A friend of mine walking out of the movie looks at my brother and says, Darth Vader's Luke's dad. <laughs> hey, hey, I can one-up you. Uh, uh, this is an absolutely true story. My older brother, Jim Gorman, we went to the 7 o'clock showing of The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. And as we're leaving the theater, the 9 o'clock audience is all lined up to go in. And he says loudly, I mean, I just, I will never, I can't believe that Luke's dad is Darth Vader. And literally 30 people heard him say it. Yeah. And we just kept on walking. You like, know, and yeah. I thought, man, you are a real dick. You know who's not going to do anything about it? Nerds. That's right. <laughs> They're just going to fume. They're still fuming out there somewhere. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony. Candace and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show for Friday, May the 3rd. Good morning. The weekend is upon us. Uh, The Minnesota Timberwolves tomorrow night kick it off in Denver. Round two against the defending champion Denver Nuggets. Boy, I am excited to watch the uh, the Timberwolves in round two. This is the best team in the league they're playing. Uh, if they somehow pull this series out, it is a downhill run to an NBA title. I shouldn't say that, knock on wood, but they are. <laughs> hey, if they get by the Nuggets, I don't see anybody else stopping them. And uh, playing with nothing to lose, a young team exactly. with a lot of bravado, a lot of talent, and nothing to lose because if you lose to the Nuggets, well, they were supposed to win. They're favored anyway. You're a young team. They'll be back, but... Yeah, wouldn't a night upset here just be the thing? That is exactly right. The Twins uh, back in action against the Red Sox this weekend. They got that 10-game winning streak. Uh, Zep, you're going to be out there on Sunday. I might join you. Yeah, come on out and join the party. Going to be hanging out there with some KQ listeners, yeah, courtesy of Hoffman Weber Construction. Well, you know, the listeners got the tickets, Candace, but I'm sure we can sneak in. We'll figure <laughs> something out. We'll dress you up like a rally sausage. Say, <laughs> we've got the backup rally sausage here with us. It's important that I go. <laughs> Candace, you did you did offer to keep the rally sausage warm earlier this week. Those That's were right. your yes. words, not we, mine. We've got the rally sausage warmer with us. We've got to get her <laughs> in. Stat. Oh my God. We need to we need to switch gears yeah. real fast yeah. here. Yeah. Um hey, what's the um what's the height limit for a pilot? Like if you want to join the Air Force, you want to go let's say you want to join the Navy and be a yeah. top gun pilot. What's the limit? How tall do you have to not be to be able to get in there? You can't be like six six in a cockpit of one of those things. You wouldn't think so. No, they're very tight cockpits. I have 
I've been up in one of the Blue Angels with Captain Ken Switzer, a Marine pilot. Uh, took me up in Sioux City, Iowa before an air show down there. I barfed in his F-18A, proudly so. Okay, but he so- was, I would guess, so I'm 5'11", and he came in a couple inches shorter than me, but I don't know uh, what yeah. the height limit is. Okay, Maybe someone you, can tell us. You got up, and you, so you were in a, an F-18. Um, yes. It's like super tight quarters, right? Yeah, I mean, right. You could, you, there's no getting your shoulders up and moving your arms around in any sort of windmill fashion. No, no, no. In so fact, you, so I'm in the cockpit. Like I said, I'm 5'11", probably very average sized, mm-hmm. uh, width-wise, weight-wise. And my elbows would have been almost touching both sides of the cockpit. Man. Yeah. So yeah, that's not, incredible. Not, not big. Not a big guy, but I, you know, I did meet another uh, Air Force pilot, retired Air Force pilot. Now that I think about it, I called him Captain America because, I mean, he just was perfect. Mm-hmm. His teeth were perfect. His hair was perfect. He was, was perfect in every way, and he was over six feet. I wow. bet. Yeah. So you know, I'm, I, I met um, a group of Air Force pilots at Shaw Air Force Base in South Carolina. Yeah. So my brother was the editor of a small town newspaper right next to the base. Okay. And therefore, he knew all the media people on the base. You know, there's a lot of military coverage when you live in a small town right next to a base. Um, and so Bob knew, my brother Bob knew everybody. Uh, and we went to the officers club at Shaw Air Force Base one night and it was just a group of pilots, like fighter pilots, all in the bar. Yeah. Right? Officers club. And they were playing a game. At, they have pool table and there was a game they played and it had a name like, it was like Buck or so, like a one, one syllable just, let's go play some crack or something like that <laughs> and it w- there was no cues but it was basically what i remember from it was you were trying to get a ball from one corner pocket to another corner pocket but there was body contact and blocking and i don't really even remember how it worked but this was a game they played and uh they asked my brother and i to play with them and these guys played this game uh, i learned a lot about fighter pilots that night which is don't compete with them <laughs> they, they they were ready to play to the death. Yeah. Like uh, I'm like, and they're and this is at a time I'm the long haired guy from the band. Yeah, and they're like, oh man, listen, you guys all the time is great. All right, you want to play a game? And then they tried to murder me in this <laughs> officers club. They actually and do they, play they games were, to they, the death. The, everything they did, it was like the the uh, like you guys are like. Top yeah. Gun douchebags. Like, you just, <laughs> you have one speed, and it's, yeah! I yeah. mean, it was the most intense display of testosterone I've ever been a part of in my life. And I was like, and I couldn't admit they were hurting me. I was like, oh, yeah, I was giving it back and all this. I got home that night, I just wanted to die. I was like, I took like 19 body blows from these guys, yeah. all of them. And they were all 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, just that they all look like Tom Cruise. It was just yeah. like right out of a cookie cutter Top Gun, yeah. but, but they're Air Force, not 0. Navy. 0.3% body fat. Yeah. Uh, that's what I noticed about these guys. Yeah, crazy. Uh, the uh, uh, Anonymous, rather, on the talk and text line, pilots range uh, between 5 feet 4 inches to 6 feet 6 inches to be a United States Air Force pilot. So you can be as, you okay. could have been a pilot. Uh, I mean, someone, you oh, couldn't have been, but you could have been. Also, Mike, thank you for this text. Game on the pool table was crud. Oh. Thank you, sir. Going back to like ninety one for me in that. That's that's that that Crud. does that does sound right. Yeah, I said crack and buck. I knew it was something. That's I was, pretty I close. Was, I was circling Crud. all around it. <laughs> Mike, an Air Force vet. Thank you for that, brother. Yeah, man, love it. All right. So, how about this? Uh, scams. Ever been a victim of a scam? Mm. Ever scammed anybody? If you have, call us and confess, and, and we're going to bring the cuffs right over. Whatever you want to say. We were talking about uh, a, a gentleman in the area who stopped a scam in progress. It's a pretty crazy story. Oh, and also, we've also got the kind of story that I know nobody wants to hear, but you have to hear. And that is, of course, the night the dentist went a little too far. That's coming up in just a moment. <laughs> Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It's Friday, May 3rd. Tomorrow is May the 4th. Sunday is, of course, Cinco de Mayo. So Star Wars folks, Cinco de Mayo folks, uh, Twins folks, Timberwolves folks, a lot, a lot going on over the next couple of days. A lot of things to, uh, to occupy your mm-hmm. weekend. As always, you got to be careful. Don't answer a phone call in your phone from a number you don't recognize. And do not click on a link in an email or a text unless you are 1,000% sure it is there because the scammers are 
everywhere. It's getting easier and easier to scam. Therefore, it's easier and easier to be scammed. And we've already heard a couple of nightmarish stories. And I believe someone else is on the KQ Talk and text line 651-989-ROCK. Candace, who we got? Yeah, we have Colleen Justice. And she um, lives in Richfield, but she's also an awesome, super funny comedian. Colleen Justice, good morning. Hi, how are you? Uh, great, thank you very much. First things first, is that your real yeah. name? Yeah. What a yeah. great name. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. it's not bad. That, that, not bad. That, that works um, yeah. really well. And apparently you're the, the, the funniest woman in Richfield by a mile, so uh, <laughs> we're happy to have you on the show. What have you got for us, Colleen? Well, I had friends call me and tell me you guys were talking about being scammed, and I still get teased for it. So I um, I find myself to be kind of a cynical person naturally, so I don't think I'm gullible. I would mess around with the people from Apple when they would call you and say, there's a charge on your phone. You know what I mean? So you knew you were being scammed, so I was like, I would mess with them. Of course. So I had just, I was just newly divorced. I was just getting my first house post-divorce. And so like all of the things that you normally didn't have to deal with were like now on my lap, right? So I had something on my door saying, hey, the water company is going to be coming by in the next month and they're going to be changing all the water heaters or the water meters. And so you don't have to be there for it, but just to give you a heads up, if there's someone in your yard, that's what's happening. So that happened. I got that. And so I was driving to a work appointment and I get this phone call from some, uh, I think it was the water, I don't know, it was some utility company. And they said, hey, you haven't paid your $700 because we're going to be changing your water. I'm like, you have to pay for that? I would think that that would be something that you would take care of. Mm-hmm. No, and we're not. And we're going to turn your water off tonight at 10 o'clock. And so where do I, I'm like full on panic. I'm like, no, 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 no. Look, I, I don't, I never saw anything. But don't worry. You don't have to worry. We won't turn your water off. All you have to do is go and get a gift card over at <laughs> Holiday. We work with them. We're in when we're in business where we can make it convenient for you. So I call my appointment. I say, hey, I'm going to be late because I had to figure this out. I'm full on panic mode. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I get there. I bring up the uh, gift card and I'm on the phone with the guy. He's directing me where to go. And I get to the register and the girl is hearing me and she goes and she's looking at me and she's shaking her head. And I put him on, I put the guy on mute and I said, no, no, I know what you're thinking. You think I'm getting scammed, but I'm totally (laughs) not. (laughs) I'm totally on top of this. And they're like, okay. And then as the, all of a sudden the dots are connecting and I'm like, holy, I'm such an idiot. And I'm like, yeah. And so then I silently walk away and get back in my car and I'm like, I know what you're doing. You're a piece of blah blah. I'm swearing and I'm like, mm-hmm. I am so I was so angry. I'm like, I will kill you. And then he threatened <laughs> to kill me. He's like, Ooh. I'm gonna kill you. And oh, I boy. Like, you know you know where I live, so why don't you come and do I was so fired up. I was so angry and I was so embarrassed. And to add insult to injury, I was gonna be turning fifty like the next day or so and so i was like leaning into turning 50 big time because now i'm old and i'm gonna be scammed now so then i felt like i went to my work i went to my work appointment and then i felt like oh i'm so glad that that girl saved my ass on that so went back to walmart or walgreens and i went and i i was gonna give her like 20 bucks to thank her for helping me and she wasn't there and so i was telling the guy behind the counter i'm like hey who was working here at this time i'd like to thank her and give her some money could you pass it along to her and he goes oh no no we're trained to do this because old people get scammed all the time oh Oh, no come on buddy and of all of the things that happened that afternoon that cut the deepest (laughs) i was like i am officially an old person that gets scammed so yeah that's me Colleen, you have the 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 joie de vie and the and the voice, in fact, of a woman in her late forties at the oldest. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> of course. I that. You know what's so funny is a guy told me not that long ago that I look forty, and I'm at that point in my life where being told you look forty is the biggest compliment. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I passed that it, line yeah. a long time ago myself, so uh, I oh, fully get it. Um, it hurts. Man, that's uh that is I I like I like the I like straight going to I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. It was like it's nobody would think that that would happen to me cuz I feel like like I said I'm a cynical person. Yeah. I'm always looking at people like what's going on here and here I am buying gift cards at Walgreens. <laughs> 
That's, a, that's that, yeah. That's that's the story we talked about. That's exactly what they do. Colleen, thanks for uh, thanks for bearing your soul for us. It is a pleasure to chat with you this yes, morning. Thank you, Colleen. Well, thank Justice. You. Yeah, you have a show next week, don't you? You want to give it a little plug? Wow. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Abstire are doing a show over at I think it's called the Black Bear Brewery in Hopkins on Main Street. Right. Yeah. When is it? It's next. It's the night. It's a Thursday night. I think it's like Next a Thursday. seven o'clock show, so it's Next nice Thursday. for the old people. We can get home early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. You and you're you're appearing with who? Um, uh, Nate Abshire. Oh and yeah, yeah. He owes me money. Get give him my number, <laughs> would you? <laughs> he owes me money. <laughs> uh, we love Nate around here. He's a good man. That sounds like a good night. Thanks, Colleen. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, have a good day. All Maybe right, uh, Nate could pick us up a gift card. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. Let's see if you we know, can track him and down. And it's the gift card thing, too. And it sounds, as Colleen's telling the story and all of our listeners have been telling the story, you're like, if, no one's going to ask you to buy a gift card to pay a bill, especially a municipality. But at the time, you're thinking, all right, I just got to get this taken care of immediately. My daughter got scammed when she was down at Mankato State. Someone hacked into her computer and said, hey, you know what? We can go ahead and clear that virus off your computer for you for $500. And she called me for the $500. And we had already covered that one on the air. And I went, oh, no, kiddo, you're being scammed. You know, a year ago, I mean, it was last year around this time, the first time we talked about that scam where people use AI and they get your kid's voice and then your your kid actually calls you saying, I'm in jail. and And we were... We're on the air freaking out about it because it's brand new to us. And a guy called who's an attorney mm-hmm. who deals with people just arrested, and he fell for it. Yeah. He's like, my son is like, Dad, I just I just ran a red light. I hit a pregnant woman. I'm in jail. Um, I'm going to put you on the phone with this guy. And then a, a, he gentleman gets on. He goes, I'm a, and it's, it's a, out of town somewhere else. He goes, hey, I'm here. I'm, I, I can take care of your son. I need $5,000 to get to, you know, pop him out, and I'll represent him. And this is an attorney who does this for a living, and he's running upstairs to see how much cash he has. And then he's like, hey, wait a minute. And he opens the door, and his son's in his bedroom. Right, exactly. Uh, I remember asking him, you have no doubt it was your son. This is your yeah, child. Yeah. Every one of us, sitting, you and I sitting here, will say, uh, we will know the voice of our child. Of course. Emphatically, without question. And he said, that was my oh, kid. That's, that's AI. so scary. Well, you know, we're playing uh, Elvis Presley singing uh, Baby Got Back, and it sounds like the king yeah. singing Baby yeah. Got Back. Which, were, if he were still with us, of course he would do. Without You wouldn't even have to ask <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, absolutely. Total Candace, butt guy. Candace, do we have another, Wow. Do we have another uh, caller, Candace? Kathy from Forest Lake. Kathy, good morning. Good morning. Thank How are you. you guys? We're great. Thank you for uh, your patience. What have you got for us? Well, I have a girlfriend, Stephanie, who lives in California, mm-hmm. and she was out visiting me. And so we were like out in Duluth, you know, so I had taken some pictures and I posted, you know, on Facebook, you know, with Stephanie, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, um, and she is not on Facebook. Okay. So about a year later, this is last year, I got a phone call and um, it was a guy and he said that um, my girlfriend, Stephanie, is going to be taken away from the cartels. And but he can help her, and I'm like, what? What? Well, you know? Uh, like she'd been and kidnapped go, by the cartel? Yeah, right. Cartels grabbed yeah, her. Yeah, let wow. me talk. And I said, let me talk to her. Oh, she's in the hysterics. We can't even hardly get anything out of her. And I'm like, I want to talk to her. So finally, someone gets on the phone and like they're hysterical. It was a girl. I couldn't even understand her. And then I thought. I'm kind of kind of thinking Stephanie wouldn't be in Mexico, you know. And then I watched Doctor Phil too, so I'm figuring, okay, this is a scam. <laughs> so now I'm going to start messing with this person. Right. So I continued on. He's, you know, he's like, how much does your friend mean to you? And I go, man, she means the world to me. And he goes, well, what? what would you pay for me to help her? And I said, I'll, I'll give you a million dollars. And he's <laughs> like, don't, you don't have a, you don't have a million dollars. Don't F with me. You know? And I said, how do you know I don't have a million dollars? You know? And then he's like, uh, you know, he just kept on swearing at me. And then I said, well, fine. Okay. 
And I said, well, okay, I'll give you 50 bucks. And he goes, well, I need more than that. I need some gas money. And I said, all right, I'll give you $51, you know. <laughs> Anyways, this kind of went on. And and I just, I, it, I was just messing with him, you know. So yeah, it, ended up, it ended up me saying, I started saying, I know you're a scammer. And I'm just like, you, you know, I just let him have it. I'm not going to say what I said on the air, but yeah. yeah. But I was really surprised on what, what amazes me is how did they know that Stephanie was my friend? Right, right. Like, how did they, you know, how did they, how did they connect? And I'm thinking the only way they could have done this is by those pictures I posted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when they had your phone number, would your phone number have been available on Facebook, or maybe? No. They, yeah, maybe they hacked into your phone and oh, I, Stephanie, I mean, you call Stephanie a lot. Yeah, right. And this is brutal. But yeah. So, anyways, thank God for Doctor Phil. Thank yeah. Hey. What, what would Doctor <laughs> Phil have done? I'm going to jerk a knot in your tail. <laughs> That's what he would have done. Would have jerked a knot in their tail. <laughs> now, Kathy, you have to understand. Now, these cartels are not playing games. <laughs> So, you know so, what? I'm just surprised you're not pregnant. Well, <laughs> you know what? And, and, and if you're carrying the baby of a cartel boss, well, then you've got a whole other set of worms you got to deal with. <laughs> Man, Doctor Phil, Kathy, thanks for the call, and all our best to Stephanie. I need yeah. you, baby. I can't bear to let you go. <laughs> wow, Doctor Phil, I didn't know we were loaded with Phil drops. Oh, we've got them all. Man, what, that's fantastic, uh, Doctor Phil, all day long. What the hell are you thinking? Yeah. Now, Oprah, let me ask you this. Um, man, I, boy, Dr. Phil hit the scene like a... He came in like a Ooh. wrecking ball, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Somebody touched my pee-pee. Well. Um, <laughs> that's like, right, that's remember it. the old Cheech and Chong bailiff? Wacky as pee-pee. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you know, speaking of that that uh, that AI scam uh, on the phone, you know, a buddy of mine in Nashville uh, was he and his wife, they're no longer married, but they, they have kids, you know, they're co-parenting and whatnot. Uh, he, uh, his wife was uh, on vacation somewhere in like Central America. And then my buddy Will got a call and it was his, it was their oldest son in the exact, on the thing saying, Hey, I just talked to mom. Um, I called her and she's, you know, in the Dominican Republic, wherever she was, or she's in Honduras or something. And, she can't help but dad. I get, and he had this story. I'm in jail. I'm I'm drunk, and I did it. I actually I did it, dad. I I killed this guy. I did it. I'm guilty. And Ooh. and 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 he's like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And it's his it's his son's voice. Holy! Crap. And then his phone rings, and it's his ex wife calling from wherever she was, freaking out because she just got off the phone with him too, and it was all a scam. The kids at work. It's just two in the afternoon. He he texts his son because he so my friend Will texted his son to just double check, and yeah. his, his kid's like, "I'm at work. What are you talking about?" And he's like, "I'm on the phone with you right yeah. now, and you're drunk and crying in jail." Yeah, and and the his ex and down and you know, she's literally like booking a flight to get back immediately. Yeah, and he has to call her and go, "Hang on, this is a scam." I mean, it's just. Beyond terrifying. It's getting so sophisticated, and the AI is a wrinkle that uh, that's the one that, because you're not going to get me to buy a gift card. I've heard too many stories from Clay yeah, Justice yeah. and all, Greg and all of our callers Man. not going with the gift card any longer, but that AI thing, that's a new wrinkle. And you can't help but think, you guys have the wherewithal to figure out how to scam people across continents. I mean, you, you can figure stuff out. You can do things. You apply yeah. yourself. <laughs> exactly. There isn't some sort of... I mean, they'll pay you six figures somewhere yeah, to just right. sit around and, I you don't could, know, you do could data make, entry You could probably make a legit living doing uh, corporate security, IT security, so that this doesn't happen to other people. Candace, yeah. uh, do we have another caller on the KQ Talk and Text Line? Yep. Uh, DD from Fairball. DD? Is that what you said? Oh, yeah. Right. Turn your radio down, Dee Dee. We're ready for you. Okay. So uh, I was on a dating app a while back, and uh, after a few failed attempts, I finally found somebody that was really interesting. And like all these other scammers, of course, it's super emotional, right? They play on your emotions. Mm -hmm. What better territory than via a dating app? Yep. This guy yes. was amazing. He was a well, diamond miner. that's your first miner. sign right there. An amazing and guy. Yeah, 
and he was good looking and he was articulate and he had quit his full time engineering gig to pursue this diamond mining thing. And oh he just always happened to be flying to Russia mm. when it came time for us to meet. And <laughs> oh, that old <laughs> line. I, I'm pretty savvy. Like I, my my elderly mother had done the uh, gotten the call from my grandson scam. Uh, oh I've been through a few of those things and always been savvy enough to identify them. Mm-hmm. I totally fell for this line line of crap, oh. and uh, I never gave him any money, only because we never got that far. Uh, I was telling a girlfriend who's been married for like 150 years, so how would she know <laughs> about something called catfishing, which was new at the time? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I think that's totally it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I started like reeling him in <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I just found out I have to travel to Russia for work next week when you're going to be there. Oh, Let's dee, connect. Dee, you scamp. <laughs> you like it. I love it. <laughs> so then he started getting really agitated. So then I knew for sure this is a, yeah. this is a scam. Yeah. So finally when I called him out, he just got super pissed and he was like defensive and pissed and guess what? He disappeared. Yeah, of course. Guess what? There is no Mr. Perfect. Now, did he ask for uh, money at any time? No, but you could tell he was kind of leading up to that yeah. because he was like, oh, my loan didn't come through and I need all these explosives to get through customs and they're stuck in customs. And oh, he was kind of leading up to that. Yeah, yeah working, yeah. Yeah. Well, Dee Dee, nice job. I, I love the old, oh, hey, guess what? I'm coming to Russia too. That's pretty great. Just so happens. Yeah, got to, got to, got to stay. Got to keep that head swiveling around, man. You never mm. know who's coming up behind you. Thanks for the call, Dee Dee. Have a good day. Yeah, I remember Dee Dee from all time. I never answered my. I probably messaged her on Match. dot com like fifteen times. Wouldn't get back to me. No, no, you, you nothing. See, you didn't have it. You weren't going to Russia. No, I guess I wasn't Mister Perfect. No, I'm teasing. But and that's the other thing too. And we like catfishing where they just reel you in. We get those stories all the time, and so they're not playing on the adrenaline, right? That quick rush of oh god, I've got to do something to rectify this, and playing on that moment you're in shock. They're playing on the old heartstrings. I tell you what, I I've never. Uh, I've always understood and had a very soft spot for people who get catfished because of b- that thing of the uh, the idea of getting an emotional connection to someone you're not sitting in a room with. I, I, listen, I go back to 15 or 16 years old, back in the old prank call days. You know, me and my friends would sit yeah. around, you just make prank calls. Long story short, there was a guy I had played against in a high school golf. I, I was on my team's golf, my school's golf team, yeah. but I didn't know how to play golf. I just didn't have anything to do that spring. And it's a small school. And they're like, yeah, go ahead. So I'd go out and I'd play nine holes against other schools. And I would just get destroyed. I had no idea how to play. I mean, as an athlete of sorts, I could hit the ball. But I would. I was regularly in the 60s for nine holes. Right? <laughs> and in fact, once I shot a 72 for nine holes. I went literally double par. It was a 36 round par. And I shot a 72. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, so one of the guys from this school that we played, I, I just was going to prank call him. Hey, let's look up that guy. And I called the house and me and some friends and we're all listening on the extension. And, we, and it was funny. A couple of days later, I did it again. I asked for him. He wasn't there. And I said, well, who's this? And it was his sister. And I literally just was, so I'll have a prank call with some girl I've never met. And it, and we ended up just talking for a long, and all of a sudden, like, I'm 20 minutes in, and I'm like, this is the coolest girl I've ever known in my life. And then I'm like, wait, do I now backtrack and go, hey, actually, my name's not Chad. Oh my and God. I was pranking, oh. I mean, I was really, and so, and I yeah. did, I just kept it as, as if I were a friend of her brother's. And we probably had four or five conversations over the next couple of weeks, and we would just get on the phone and talk. For and and I was that's almost I, psychopathic. It was killing myself because I was like, yeah. this why Chad, can't and oh I'm, Chad? And I'm, but I'm like, why am I not just myself with girls I actually know? Like, because <laughs> I'm actually having real, honest to god, heartfelt conversation. It was great. That and then, Chad really knows how to open up. And I told my older brother, I went and I was like, hey, I got to tell you this weird thing. <laughs> and as I'm explaining this to him, he's looking at me like, I, he, wa- he just wants to break my jaw. Like, what is wrong with you? Get you in a headlock. And he goes, first of all, what kind of 
dork. And I'm like, look, I was. We, it was funny. We were prank calling the guy. We got under his skin once. It was great. And then when I started, I thought, well, I'll just mess with his sister. But then she turned out to be really cool, and she likes all the same band. He goes, you know what band she likes? I was oh like, I'm sorry. God. We got on a conversation. I just lost it. All right. And, and he's like, well, what are you going to do? I said, well, what? Sh- I don't know. I said, I want to call her and go, my name's actually this. Oh, my God. And just... And no. then just ask her out. And he looked at me and goes, never call her again. No. And I was like, okay. And I didn't. And I to this no. day, I'm like, I probably should have called her and come clean. Who knows? Chad, she's wondering. Still she to this wondering. day, she's like, there was a guy once. She's on her second divorce now. Yeah. She's like, but there was this one guy once when I was young, Chad. And I don't know if she's the probably, got disconnected. She's, they probably had to move. Yeah, she probably relocated to Hopkins. And I, she's driving to work right now going, there's that voice. That son of a bitch. I haven't heard that voice since 1980. <laughs> well, anyway, Anne, sorry. I meant to get back to you. My brother told me not to. Yeah. But but my point was this. I, I catfished myself. That was <laughs> it, it, You get emotionally entangled, and next thing you know, I'm involved in a relationship, and I couldn't get out of it. Uh, you catfished yourself. That's beautiful, man. I love uh, that story. You know, someone had to. No Chad. one else was catfishing me. I had to step up and do it. Oh, the good old days of prank calls. All right, I have not <laughs> forgotten. We do have a story for all of the dental phobics oh. out there. We will share it with you against our better judgment. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. Zip. Tony, Candace, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It's Friday, May the 3rd. What a weekend we have in front of us. Yeah. May the 4th tomorrow. No local theaters, but there are 16 theaters across America. The closest one, uh, Milwaukee, I think, will be playing... All of the Star Wars movies tomorrow in a row. It's a 21-hour marathon. (laughs) Marathon, as they say. Can you imagine? uh, I can't. Star Wars nerds also, I mean, I think nerds, not the best hygiene I've noticed over the years. I mean, can you imagine? That place is going to reek. You know what? I got got a text. Popcorn and body odor. We were talking about this a few hours ago, and I got a text from a buddy, and his text was, the smell in those theaters. No thank you. Yeah, right? I'm going to be doing the opposite. Set of nerding out tomorrow. I'm going to be one of the hosts of the MCs up there. I don't know what I'm gonna, just hanging out at the Dirty Rotten Biker Fest. Hell That's yeah. the website, DirtyRottenBikerFest.com. Up in Princeton, it's an all day affair. I think it started about 11 a.m. actually. A live music all day long, Armored Combat. I watched these guys last. These guys are in full armor, and they are, I mean, they're not using wooden sticks. They're not LARPers out there with their wooden sticks and their wooden shields and thous. These guys are big, like offensive linemen big, uh-huh. in full, the real deal armor, and they are beating the crap out of each other with really? axes and swords. It's pretty intense. I'm looking at a photo of it right now. Yeah, armored combat. So these guys come in, so that's a one in five o'clock worst tattoo contest. Yeah, there's a Daisy Duke contest, because... Because it's America. Beer chugging contest. Dirty Rotten Biker Festival up in Princeton. Come join the party, won't you? Holy yeah. smokes. Yeah, are you going to get me a present? They have nice shopping there, usually. They do have nice shopping. I am going to pick you out something, Woo! Candace. I don't, uh, get a, I don't know get what's Get an axe be. and a spade and a helmet. <laughs> I was th- th- update Candace's <laughs> armor. Definitely getting her a helmet and probably, yeah, a battle axe. Why did you say my name like that? <laughs> I don't know. It's just one of those things that happened. What, what did Candace. I say? Candace's? What did I say? Condus. 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 Where's my wine, wench? That's what it sounds like to me. It's, uh, we're going Ren Fair almost. Yeah, with that armor. it's my favorite. And a fireworks finale. Wow. I just noticed that. Yeah. All right, really cool. There we go. That's, uh, that's pretty great. That's yeah. So, so you're, what you're saying is it's not like the LARPers that I used to see on Sundays who would go out there in their plastic swords and their no. uh, and and the, the 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 role playing was was very intense. It was Knights of the Round Table stuff in a park where we used to live. Uh, and every Sunday you'd walk out and there'd be all these you know Maid Marians and yeah. dudes defending the honor of the good wench. I, for story, you know, whatever it was. Right, like, tapping their wooden swords against their shields. I defend so- your honor, Wendy. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, sure, and whatever. Kind of clunking around. I would love to see them show up in, uh, with these guys. These guys are crazy. But mostly they just, uh, first of all, uh, really the idea is to knock someone on their back. Because when you knock a big guy over mm-hmm. in a full suit of armor, uh, they're a turtle. They're not getting up. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
You just <laughs> get that exactly son of a bitch. Right. The, and then they go at it for like several minutes, just wham, wham, denting their armor. They got the axes. Yeah. And then... <sighs> Yeah, Might have to lean on it. the fence a little bit here, Gotta dude. Dude, what's with all breath. what's with all the Pilates? Well, I'm doing armor combat, <laughs> and uh, the core strength is more important than ever. Oh yeah. Uh, we were talking earlier in the show about uh, scammers and catfish situations, yeah. and we've had several calls. If you want to share a story with a six five one nine eight nine rock is the talk and text line. I just got a text. Uh, so I have a woman contact me on Facebook. I knew her years ago. She keeps messaging me, messaging me all sorts of random stuff. I knew it wasn't her in reality because I used to date her sister. She asked me what I was doing for a living. I'd worked in the medical field for decades. I told her I'm still a commercial fisherman. And she says, nice, we should meet. I said, I'm off the shore of Scotland. She said, oh, I've always wanted to go there. I said, "Let's." that sounds great. After you get to Scotland, jump in the ocean and start swimming. I'll catch you sooner or later. <laughs> and that ran her off. Good That's night, good. ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are still talking good scam stories. Uh, if you, Like I said, if you want to hit us on the text or talk line, 651-989-ROCK is the number. Okay, I have a long History. I've got a rap sheet, if you will, with dentistry. As in, I didn't take care of my teeth early in life, uh-huh. and it's been you. And you're, I've been playing catch up for decades. Yeah, taking that's... care of myself now. And um, when I got to the Twin Cities, you probably are aware of the fact I met a great dentist named Steve Gorman. And I go to the Gorman Center for Fine Dentistry, and they're awesome, and yeah. I love it. And I, I have so much experience with dentistry that I don't. It doesn't phase me to be in a dentist chair. I'm not oh. one of those people who's like, oh my god. I, when I was a kid, to get a filling after a while, I was like, yeah, fine, go, let's go, let's knock it out. I've had a couple of root canals. I've had. I did not. Ta- I did it to myself for years. Now I take good care of my teeth. But even like on my worst day, it, I wasn't a dental phobe. If right. That's a word. Gas or nothing. Take no. the needle. No, no. I'll, I'll, I'll take the Novocaine. Really? Uh, oh, yeah. I just take the pain. I don't like the gas oh, in the no. dentist chair. I if you if I'm going to do nitrous, I want it to be in a balloon in a parking lot outside of a concert. <laughs> that, that's I want it to do nitrous the way you're supposed to do nitrous. Ouch. Doesn't bother me at all. The dentist no, thing. Really? So so I'm Ouch. saying I'm just saying that as a. This is not me going, oh, the dentists are terrifying, because they're not to me. Although I understand very well that for a lot of people, it is an uncomfortable at at best situation. Check this story out. A man, this is in Turkey. Uh, There's a lawsuit going on right now. A a 40-year-old man had a toothache, went in and saw his dentist who said, we've got to pull a few of your teeth and we're going to need to replace those with implants. Now, an implant, and I've got one of those too. They screw, they take a screw, put it directly into your jaw, and then put the fake tooth over that screw. They drill into your jawbone. All right. They were installing a tooth in this gentleman's, the upper left side of his mouth. And he said, hey, I think you're pushing too hard. You're pushing too hard. And the dentist said, relax, man. It's totally normal. Yeah, don't tell me how to do it. Yeah. uh, The dentist pushed so hard, the screw actually broke this gentleman's jaw. Ah! God, son of a... Kept going. No, no. Kept going north. What? Stop. Pierced his brain. No way. Is it, that true? it ended up lodged in his skull behind his left eye. There is a photo of, of the x ray. The dentist um, screamed out in pain. The dentist then went, oh, wait, maybe it did go too far. <laughs> the dentist rushed him to the ER and just dropped him off. Well, oh. and, he, and then what? Headed and, to and Mexico? He's, and he's, he's on the lamb. He's gone. Oh, my God. Uh, the doctors did call in his family. They said, we're about to operate on your husband. He's got a screw in his brain. Uh, he survived. He's going to be fine, but it was very touch and go for a little while there. Uh, the dentist is gone. He's, the, just, he's, he's on the run. Just wow. disappeared. Just disappeared. What, the, what was this in the back of and a I see, no, this was an, this was an, This was a legit dentist who no longer is probably a legit dentist. And, you know, I, I have seen stories um, in a lot of neighborhoods, you know, in, in not well-to-do. In the poorer neighborhoods, you will see people practicing dentistry like in their basement. They got a little <laughs> They got a little bit of information. Yeah. And they, they can get their hands on drugs. And they just, there, there are, every year you'll see several stories oh, yeah. of like Providence, Rhode Island. A man was busted for doing illegal dentistry. Industry. Right. I, I understand illegal haircuts. Right. I, I get like, I don't have a license, but I'm cu- I'm cutting people's hair. Let me try your bangs out there. Yeah, yeah I got yeah. you. I, I could even get like, I could go so far as to say, um, you know, I, well, the kid's arm was dislocated. I reset, or I, I set a broken bone. Okay, maybe you've seen a coach do that in a game, or maybe you've seen F- FYI but, video on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure. but, the, the, but, but committing to... Yeah, I was just doing a little dentistry in the basement. 
Uh-uh. Uh, 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 yeah, I mean, if you want to, maybe a tooth cleaning. But yeah, we did a story, I think last year. It was an illegal dentist operation, and these were people that uh, may or may not have been American citizens, probably weren't in California. Mm-hmm. They were running it out of the back of a tile shop. Right out of the back of the tile shop, got busted. Someone, yeah, something weird like this happened. They drilled a bit into some dude's brain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You know, it's funny. They say, like, uh, very competent people. If competent people had the confidence of incompetent people, how far could you go in life? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, like if you're really, if if you've worked really hard and you've studied hard and you've done the job and you have a mod and and just an amount of self awareness, you are smart enough to not think you're you're genius. You know what I mean? Like, the more you know, the more you realize. As you don't know. And it's always the idiot who's like, I saw that guy give a feeling once. I can do it. And you just <laughs> jump right in. Like, you just, I, I do sometimes wonder, like, how far could we all go if we all had the confidence of the dumbest person we know? Uh, well, I, I don't think we'd go, you know, where we'd go. Probably straight to the morgue, a lot of us. Just probably well, wouldn't survive it. That's you know? very true. The self-awareness is, is key here. So uh, and, key. And, and really important. And by the way, I don't even insist on having a lot. Just a touch. Just have a touch of self-awareness. Yep. And I'm thinking of a California school district that just had to fire their superintendent. A school board had a vote, an emergency hearing to put the superintendent of a California school district on the, do we keep you or are you gone? They fired her. And here is why. It's a woman named Marion Phelps. Again, she is the (laughs) Poway Unified School District superintendent. And uh, word got out that at the softball awards banquet last year in okay. May, last year in May, her daughter was a, is a softball player for her high school. Um, after they had their softball awards banquet, when her daughter was given some award uh, and everybody has a big night, she wins. Uh, there's their team pictures. It's a, it's a nice, it's a, it's a banquet, awards sure. banquet. After the ceremony, several of the other players on the team received text messages from this woman who is the superintendent of their school district, direct text messages to her daughter's teammates saying, you didn't clap loud enough for my daughter. (laughs) And then she threatened to revoke their graduation privileges if they didn't apologize. Oh, wow. You will not graduate. Don't mess with mom. I can keep you from graduating unless you call my daughter (laughs) and apologize for not applauding for her. That's what they call abuse of power. And this is I, superintendent. Yeah. What kind of special hell do you think you're going to rain down on your daughter as a result of this action? If they don't apologize, so you're going to have them all apologize. Your daughter yeah. will be ostracized oh, yeah. for the rest of her life in this school district. I don't know if she was a senior and hopefully she's running away from you as quickly as possible. But yeah, you've just made her let... La- and, and there might have been a smattering applause because she's the superintendent's daughter and well, whatever. But, uh, yeah, you've just made life incredibly more difficult for your daughter. You've solved nothing. You've created, like I said, uh, this major issue, social issue for your daughter. So uh, what did the players on that team do? They didn't apologize to her daughter. They told their coach, which makes sense. They yes. hey, coach, um, you know, like, uh, you know, Nancy's mom is the superintendent and she's threatening us with yes. text messages and phone calls. Right. The coach goes to the school board meeting and says, hey, your superintendent's threatening my girls. Yeah. Like, because it tells the story. Psycho. And then his livelihood is threatened. And he said, <laughs> here's a quote from the coach. Because I exposed these abuses and emails to the board members, I was falsely accused of verbally attacking a different member of the board in the district parking lot. That was the justification to have me fired as the coach of the softball coach at Del Norte High School. I'm sorry, this started with softball awards, It started awards, with right? so- softball okay. awards, right. yeah. You yeah. didn't clap for my daughter, so I'm going to take you down. I won't let you graduate, and I'm going to fire your coach. Nothing petty about that. Um, yeah, it's a... And you, th- weird this, this and is, bizarre. And, yeah. I mean, you choose your battles. That's where you're drawing the line. That's where you're going to get into... Threatening uh, young athletes. <laughs> I, I'm this superintendent, this woman who was relieved of duty now. After uh, this happened, this started a year ago. It took this long to get rid of her. Oh, wow. um, I will say. Um, go to any condo board, any homeowners association. There's one of two of those on the board at all times. There's yeah. always somebody who's simply looking to exert ultimate authority over anybody or anything. Well, that's why you have a board. That's why there's these systems are layered, right? That's a bureaucracy. So someone be. in the uh, hierarchy there goes, shut up. Yeah. Shut up. That's it. Get out of here. Okay, so from... 
quotes from somebody practicing dentistry on their own. How about this? How about an orangutan? How do, how do you say orangutan? orangutan? Orangutan. I always say tang as is if it? there's a G. That's so do I, but there it's is an spelled orangutan. orangutan. Okay. One of those apes from the Clint Eastwood movies. Okay. Let's just call Clyde. him Clyde. <laughs> okay. Uh, researchers have observed an orangutan. I'm just going to say orangutan. An orangutan treating itself with medicine. Check this oh, out. Weird. In Indonesia, there's a rainforest full of orangutans, and there is a and and, and there are researchers and and uh, biologists and you know botanists, uh, zoologists who study the animals there. There's a male orangutan who got into a fight with one of the other apes in the jungle. In the following day, scientists observed this orangutan chewing on a particular plant that has known pain killing properties. Not normally in an orangutan's diet. They okay. don't eat this plant. However, yeah. this guy was beaten up in a fight, so he was eating this plant. And then Rakus, the orangutan, his name is Rakus, <laughs> he then formulated a paste from branches of this plant and placed them to the wounds on his body. All right. A week oh. later, he was healed and had no infections. He, okay, so yeah, uh, applied his own medicine he, to a wound. Yes, he he knew well, what what plant to chew. He chewed this plant to make a paste, applied it to his wounds, and he healed himself. Okay, well, in the Planet of the Apes movies, which are I'm sure very well researched. By the way, let's get the pronunciation right here. Orangutan. Orangutan. Mm-hmm. Orangutan. Can I say it like orangutan? Orangutan. 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 So this guy, he's they are the smart Asia. ones. They're yeah, the smart they're ones. so cool. I mean, they they've been known. They're experts at using tools. Did That's, you guys know that? I did not know that. So and you're telling me a cartoon. <laughs> Hold on, Candace. You're <laughs> telling Jungle me. Book. You're telling me that an orangutan can mm-hmm. use a tool. Yeah, they make their own umbrellas if it's raining. Um, they're really strong, so they well, break that. open fruit shells, and they make <sighs> their own nests. You know, I hear stories like this, and it makes me not want to hunt orangutans. But the <laughs> season's coming up soon. I've already bought my don't, tag. Don't, don't. And there's also, like, not that many left in the world. Aren't there? Yeah. Um, so, well, then they're not that smart, are they? <laughs> I, I just want to recap. You're telling me that an orangutan can use tools. That's amazing. Orangutan. Well, there was orangutan. the one, the one the video up. went viral years ago. It's looking at a phone. I mean, it's actually sitting there looking at a sure. phone, mimicking mm-hmm. a human. I don't know if it's actually, it fell into the zoo enclosure. And uh, and then there's the one with the sunglasses. Then there's the one that peed in its mouth. And that's why I think I we've, we've what, still got an edge on him. I'm rethinking about all that stuff I've said about how smart Sean he is. Look at him. He's just laying there with a, he's had a bandage on his foot for eight weeks. If he was an orangutan, he yeah. would have fixed this thing by now. Think of the vet bill he would have saved you. Oh, for God's sake. I, no, I, I, you know what? Don't, he would have chewed a leg off one of the chairs and made a splint for himself. And yeah, you're no orangutan. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking totally, to you. I'm totally <laughs> let down. And i tell you something else, and I've tried this, and I can't get him to do it to save my life. I what? cannot get him to throw a punch. <laughs> right turn, Clyde. <laughs> that oh, those were classics, weren't they? Uh, truly tremendous movies. And you know, <laughs> you know what I did not know until last year. What? Okay, every which way but loose, and then any loose, which way, any you which can. way you can. Yeah. First of first and foremost, Clint, nice job just uh, just immersing yourself in the Bakersfield country scene. That that whole sound <laughs> that was great. But secondly, you watch those movies, and he's got his right hand man, the guy who's constantly spinning his hat on his head. You know, Cl- oh, Philo yeah. Beto's buddy. Yeah, right. The buddy, the right hand man. Yeah, that actor whose name escapes me, but who everybody knows. Everybody's seen him in a million oh, things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see him and you're like, oh, I know that guy. He's Clint's buddy. Yeah, that guy is Juliette Lewis's dad, the actress Juliette Lewis. Really? The, her dad is that guy in Every Which Way But Loose. Okay, well, I guess, yeah, I don't know if that blows me away or not. It's certainly unknown to me. It's, yeah, I mean, that that's the thing. So, okay, I'm looking it up. Jeffrey Lewis, that's his name. He plays Orville. I just had to Google it. But, yeah, he's the guy who constantly, every time there's about to be a fight, he has a baseball cap and he spins it around backwards. You know, he's just, the, he's in a million movies with Clint Eastwood. Double Impact, High Plains Drifter. We've got a scam to share. Or if you have a story about an orangutan. <laughs> orangutan, we're easy. <laughs> Let us know. We also have a history lesson coming up. And if you ain't learning, you ain't living. So let's keep on living. Hang tight. Connect with us on the KQ Talk and Text Line, 651-989-ROCK. That's 651-989-ROCK, 92 KQRS. 
I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It's Woo. Friday, May the 3rd. And that was Paul McCartney and Wings. Wings. <laughs> His band after the Beatles. Wings. You're getting so spit all cute. over your microphone. Uh, Paul McCartney and Wings, Band on the Run. That was the breakthrough they'd been waiting for. Uh, mm-hmm. Late 1973, it came out. Uh, interesting story about Paul McCartney and Wings. Uh, you know, <laughs> he always presented it as a band, and he was always trying to have a band. I want another band. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine, like, being the guy who joins Paul McCartney and Wings, and then you're in the studio, you go, oh, hey, I had a thought. And Paul just <laughs> no. goes, Paul's like, I shut down George Harrison on film, dude. I don't want to hear from you. Oh. Uh, and that's exactly what was going down. They were uh, the band was getting ready to fly to Nigeria of all places to record that album. Yeah, because he heard EMI had a studio there, and he was like, "Well, I've never been there. Let's go." And uh, and the the band was preparing to leave London for Nigeria. And two of the guys in the band said, essentially, "Hey, man, we we need a little more money, like uh, maybe a piece of the royalties on the albums." Really? I mean, we're here. And Paul went, uh, "Nope." Yeah, and uh, they oh. said, "Well, we'll leave." And he said. Yeah, yeah. Go on. There's the door. <laughs> Got and, his Rolodex out. Yeah, Paul's or like, did no, he didn't. Yeah. He's like, um, I can play drums and I can play, let's see, <laughs> I can play bass, I can play guitar, I can play keyboards. Oh, I can play everything. He's been through the White Album. He yeah, did a yeah. lot of it on his own. Like, yeah, see you later. So Paul and Linda and Denny Lane flew to... Uh, Nigeria and made band on the run, just the three of them. Isn't it interesting? He said, you know, he wanted another band, but he didn't necessarily want another John Lennon in his life. And I was uh, watching a little rockumentary when he and Elvis Costello started writing music together. Uh, they kind of, There was a, a bit of a kismet there, and they wrote some mm-hmm. fantastic tunes that people probably should track down, especially if you're a big Paul McCartney fan or Elvis and or Elvis Costello. Mm-hmm. But he said, you know what? They, and Elvis said, "This is we're on to something. We need to keep working. And Paul McCartney said, I didn't realize it at the time, but I pushed him away because because I didn't want another John Lennon. I didn't yeah. want another writing partner. Right. You know, I wanted a band. I wanted to collaborate and do that yep. kind of stuff. But I didn't want to get too cozy with someone writing songs. Um, I met a guy once. And by the way, I, I'm a card carry and McCartney guy. But that said, some of the stories you hear along the way. And you take them all with a grain of salt. Yeah. But uh, an industry, uh, the guy, a guy that used to run Columbia Records for the UK. was uh, I was at dinner with him once. And he was talking about having worked with McCartney earlier in... In a management uh, capacity, and he said when Paul McCartney came on tour in like I think it was 1989, first time in a year. You know, Wings ended by 1980, and then he did the Michael Jackson stuff. You know, McCartney went through the 80s as a solo artist, and then he put a band together to go on the road for the first time in nine or ten years, mm-hmm. and he put a good good working band together, and they were on the road. And towards the end of the tour, manager guy said, "Hey, Paul, you know we're coming up, we've got a couple dates left, and everyone's going to go home," and he said. Um, I think you should think about, you know, bonusing the, the band. And he's like, what are you talking about? And he goes, you know, like end of tour bonus. Yeah. And he goes, well, how much does the band need? <laughs> and like, he was so like, what are you talking about? And the guy said, I, you know, after the dates, he said as a number, he said, I think it he goes, it's five of them. And he goes, I think if you threw them all like a hundred grand each, like yeah. that'd be, that'd be great. And Paul said, I'm supposed to, you want me to bonus the band half a million dollars? <laughs> And the guy said, that's my suggestion. And Paul said, okay. And he said, well, Linda's in the band. Here, Linda, here's here's half a million dollars. Are you happy? And he's like, I'll give it to Linda. <laughs> and, and, you know, whether that's true or not, it was just a funny story. But it was like, yeah, the guy was in the Beatles. Let's not ask, let's not expect, I mean, yeah, he's a good dude. But but they expect him to understand much of normal life after that experience. That's I'm sorry. Way, it's just the way, a, yeah, that's the way it's just, done. Yeah. Done a, this is a guy who in 1964 said he and John were like, they'd sit down and go, oh, let's write a swimming pool today. Let's write yeah. a Rolls Royce today. It's just on a different plane. You know what I love uh, about Paul McCartney still to this day? And I'm looking because I knew, I saw this this morning and it happened, yeah, this was yesterday in Manhattan. Spotted at a deli eating a sandwich, Paul McCartney. Yeah. not uh, Didn't have an entourage. Oh, not, no, doesn't no. have all the security. They watch him walking down the street all yeah. by his lonesome. Yeah. Now he's wearing a mask, probably uh-huh. at his age in New York City. Not a bad idea. Maybe gives him a little anonymity, but not while he's eating his sandwich. But you just think to yourself, when you see celebrities these days, you know, just walk out to their car. Mm-hmm. It's like Secret Service surrounding them. Yeah. Not Paul McCartney in Manhattan. Um, no, if you want to uh, get out to the Hamptons, way out on 
Long Island where all the rich people live, uh, but but plenty of other people work there, so they're not rich. Uh, the Hamptons. It's like a two and a half, three hour drive from the city. Uh, you can drive or you can take the train or you can take a bus service from Manhattan. And it's called the Hampton Jitney. And it's a <laughs> it's just a it's a very nice, clean Greyhound. It's a bus. It's the Jitney. But it's the Jitney and it's but it's very it's it's definitely public transportation and it's very clean, but that's it. No frills. And uh, McCartney, as you might imagine, has a giant house in the East Hamptons out there with all the, you know, Billy Joel and Seinfeld and all those guys. And he, uh, as of like 15 years ago, would still take the jitney. He has an <laughs> office in Manhattan and he would hop on that thing and pay $18 and just be on a bus for three hours. He should be and, in a Bentley, and not people, a jitney. And people would be like... Uh, uh, Paul, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and, he, and he would always say, he, they'd say, can I get an autograph? He goes, no, but let's just talk for a minute. And Aww. he would just, he was happy to. Yeah. He's so cute. And he always has said, well, I feel out of touch if I don't just talk to normal people. Yeah. He's not going to pay his band, but he'll talk to you on the jitney. <laughs> you know, there's we talked about that Depression era generation, the greatest generation it's often called here in the United States that went through the Depression. Well, their Depression was following World War II. Oh, heck yeah. And Liverpool and all of England for those kids. And I don't think you, you ever get rid of it when you go through something like that. Severe poverty and depression. No. And, and, hey, and, I can I tell you right now, Noel Gallagher of Oasis, the yeah. man is worth hundreds of millions of, I mean he's wrote all those songs he's got all the money he'll ever need in a million lifetimes and I promise you that he is never more than 100 yards away from a can of Heinz beans <laughs> He travels with a road case full of Heinz beans oh. because he's like, you know, more often than not, I'm just looking at a menu going, this looks like crap. Give me some beans. Because <laughs> he grew up in a tenement, in a, in a, in a what do they call it? It's not a housing project, but the English word for that is a, God, some spacing on it in Manchester, like poorer than poor. And he's just like, no, give me some beans, man. That's I'm comfort good. food. That That's centers them, grounds them. Right. That's exactly right. KQ Talk and Text Line is 651-989-ROCK. And I'm sorry I got all busy here, but Candace, do we still have somebody who wants yeah. to share a story? Good old Ronnie from Zimmerman's been hanging on for a while. Right on, Ronnie. What do you got for us, brother? <laughs> it's a girl. <laughs> but anyway. Um, Sister many, Ronnie. Many years ago. Yes. Many, many years ago. Well, probably not many, but probably four or five. I was trying to be scammed by some dude over, I don't know, probably in Nigeria or something. But um, I caught on to it right away. Sweet talking me, trying to, you know, be all, you know, nice and all that stuff. And anyway. I played along with it for the longest time. First, he wanted me to send money to get the money over here, and mm -hmm. like a million dollars or whatever. And <laughs> I played along, and I said, no, 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 we don't want to do it that way. I said, I'll go over there and get it. He's like, no, I have security guards. I'll bring it over to you if you just send me money. I'm like, no. My, my son, you know, he, he was in combat. He's combat trained. I'll take him and his buddies with me. And he's like trying to talk me out of that. I mean, mm. I just played along with this whole thing. It lasted weeks. And it turned from that into, well, I'll have to talk to this and that. And he's like, you know, play, you know. And then it turned into his daughter is in boarding school and she needs money to oh stay in boarding school until he gets that money and all his other stuff. And I, he wanted me to get Visa cards. So I worked at a store. So I took pictures of the front of Visa cards and sent them to him. And he's like, but I need the back. I need the back scratched off. It's so long, busy right now. I can't do that. I just played this guy for weeks. Oh, so good. he finally got mad at me. And started sending the swear words and all that stuff, and then I finally blocked him. But I sent him pictures of what I was doing at work. And this, this, this is what I'm doing today. And, oh, I just played him for weeks. It was fun. We Man. laughed at work for hours. <laughs> Don't but, mess uh, with Ronnie. You know how much income he lost, time is money. You know how many people he could have scammed while you were toying with them? That's beautiful. Because we can't arrest him, because you're right, he's probably over in, you know, he's in another country on another continent. You can't get to him, but if you can F with him, yeah, beautiful. That's maybe the best time. we can do. Love it. Thanks for the call. That is fantastic. On the talk and text line, someone said, uh, this is kind of similar to what we were saying earlier. I got a scam for you. Last year, I got a phone call saying my daughter was hit by a car in a crosswalk off of Lake Street. Man. In the background, I hear a girl screaming, Dad, Dad. And I'm thinking, how is this possible? My daughter moved to Virginia Beach. I look into it. It was a scam. They're doing around Minnesota. They want to get you to drive down there to either rob you or carjack you. Like They think you're going to drive to the scene of the accident. 
accident. Yeah. And they're waiting for you to show up and jump out, and they can probably see that you're on the phone. They know when you're getting close. Yeah. Whoo, baby. Um, She goes, I called my daughter. She's in Virginia Beach. I'm fine. What are you talking about? You know, same kind of thing. You got to double. It's it's really scary to think you hear your kid's voice, and you have to now wonder, well, Mm. is this actually them or not? Um, I can tell you, and, and my wife and I have talked about this very thing, because they use AI to Get your kid's voice from, if your child has been posting TikToks or Instagram yep, videos, you they know, they it. just need a little bit of their voice and yep. they can use it for anything. And it's a weird thing to think. Our kids call us all the time. And, you know, I hear Rosemary will say like, hey, babe, what's wrong? Are you okay? You know, because she'll just hear something in their voice and yeah. he thinks, and they're like, mom, I'm fine. I'm just calling to say, you know, but with that in mind, if, if that's where you, if, if, if they sound a little off and you're already on edge as a parent and then they come at you with being very off, I, we would fall for that instantly. I mean, and we've talked about it. So, okay. When that horrible phone call comes, the first thing we have to do is the other one of us text or call the kid and make sure it's real. But I, I hate that we even have to think like that. We have I, right? to remind ourselves all the time. Yeah, no, every time my daughter calls needing a couple of bucks, I'm like, nice try, AI, and I yeah. hang up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's there it is. There's that. Oh, that's the creepiest laugh ever. Uh, on the KQ Talk and Text Line, someone also wrote, I mentioned Charlie Rich. They said, saw him at the Minnesota State Fair in 1976. I was 15 years old. He was so drunk, he fell off his pants. Piano stool, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Damn straight he did. All right, Candace, do we have another caller? Sherry from Oakdale. Sherry, good morning. Morning. What do you got for us? I um, got a phone call from somebody, and they said they were from Social Security and needed to update my information. Oh, boy. And I said, well, where are you calling from? And he hung up on me. So I immediately called him back mm-hmm. and asked, "Where, what city are you located in? Okay. And he hung up. And so that day I thought, well, I'm going to call you every half an hour. So every <laughs> half hour I called this number. He answered the phone and I said, what city are you calling? What city are you in? Yeah. yeah. And he hung up. The last time I called him was 4 p.m. and the phone was disconnected. There you go. Run them off. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, you guys have a great day. Love y'all. Thank you so much for the call. I got a text yesterday. I just remembered this. I'm reading it right now. It's from a 716 number, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is, I think, Buffalo, New York. I looked it up. Mm-hmm. And this text just came in. Go to the beauty salon together tomorrow. That's what it says. What? Go to the beauty salon <laughs> together tomorrow. Candace is laughing. She sent it. Is, That's I mean, it's Candace. right there. Yeah. You were going to cut your hair off. But I got to go. I got to monitor. You can't, <laughs> you can't cut your That's hair it. short. I won't allow it. I'm thinking of going. I'm no. thinking of chopping it off. That's dumb. It's not dumb. Look at Zep. I want a hair, I want a hair like that. <laughs> Zep is Zep. You're Steve. <laughs> I, I, have, I have Are you more... sure it's not Zip? Someone text a hello, Steve and Zip. I'm going by Zip from now on. Zippy in the morning. Zip, hey, everybody. Zippy. <laughs> Good morning, Minneapolis. It's Zippy. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I, Candace, you don't know this about me. We haven't worked together long enough yet, yeah. but I go through cycles. It's long and long and long, and then I shave it. Which one is it, Remedy? Which uh, video uh, is it, Black Crow's video, where you got the suit very, on? Very and short. The, Remedy. Very short. Yeah. Remedy, yeah, and he's got the shades on, yeah. there's He's like a Ken doll. There's many looks I to went, Steve. Uh, the second album came out, and i and, um, Many, many, many people immediately assumed, oh, there's a new member of the band, <laughs> and he's got a degree in accounting. That's what That was the vibe on the street there. Yeah, it's just a haircut. It you know, wasn't even a haircut. It was a hair shave. It was yeah, a head shave. Yeah, Jake on the talk and text line, 651-989-ROCK. This makes sense now that I'm thinking about it. We're talking about our kids using the AI voices to scam us. That's terrifying, almost to the point where people need an emergency code word to know if the call is legit. Mm. I think that's what they recommend. So maybe set mm. something up with the kids. We need that- a... We have we, uh, we, code word. That's yeah. right. We were talking with some friends about this very thing last year, and they said they have kids the same age as ours, like college age, and they do have uh, words in play, but you know, just to be safe. And uh, yep. and we should do that, but the problem is we would forget them. <laughs> Jeff here. I just said a safe word with my 88 year old mom last night for scam prevention. That's that's it. Yikes! That's how we got to crowd. This is what you got to do. 
Um, okay, here's one last uh, text I want to share with you. All right. Uh, scammer called. I answered it. I let them go through their whole spiel. And then I mentioned that I'd been masturbating the entire time we've been talking. <laughs> Maybe I want to scam call you. Yeah, for that will uh, that'll probably take care of business right there. <laughs> Let them know that you are taking care of business. All right. Thank you for the phone calls and the texts all day long. The weekend is upon us. Let's go have a great one, shall we? But before that, a quick look back. On this day in 1989, the NHL was changed forever. In what sounds like something out of a spy movie, Alexander McGilney, a 20-year-old Soviet superstar, defected. He was in Stockholm, Sweden. The young Soviet team won the world championships and were given one day off as a reward to walk around Stockholm. Now, they were being tailed by KGB agents. Of course. Of course. But they got a day... quote unquote free of a lot of security and Alexander McGilney knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy with the Buffalo Sabres and they put together a covert plan where if he were able to find himself in a particular shopping mall there'd be a car waiting for him and this 20 20 year old kid who'd never been anywhere on his own in his life uh, just met a man at the mall Found a, the guy said, "Are you Alexander? Yes, I'm so and so." And they ran into a waiting <laughs> car with KGB officers chasing them on foot. And then that car tore away. And then KGB officers in a car were chasing them. They eluded them. Spent three days on the run, checking into different hotels in rural Sweden, <laughs> using aliases and all kinds of stuff. Eventually, they put him on a plane. He landed in Buffalo uh, on May 4th, 1989. Signed with the Sabers and never looked back. And that. Opened the door for Soviet play. Now the Soviet yeah. Union was very upset about this. Uh, that's not the kind of PR they were looking for. But that that all of a sudden it was like, wait, we can get Russians in the NHL. Holy smokes! Blew the lid off, and that's boys and girls. Just how desperate the Buffalo Sabers were for talent <laughs> back right. in the day. Can we smuggle a guy out? Might cost us our lives. We might get yeah. shot in the back of the head with a forty-five. Yeah. In, yeah. You know, in Soviet Square there or whatever Red Square rather, but uh, we're desperate. They did it, and it changed the it changed sports. Yeah, it certainly did. Professionally, so, uh, uh, McGilney, twenty years old, by the way, and at that time, uh, doing it, knowing I'll probably never see my family again. Yeah, you know, and uh, right. and as it turned out, uh, two years later, the Soviet Union just just fell apart, and he was like, "Oh, I got money, let's go." So it all worked out well. Pretty scary stuff. Get the KQ Morning Show podcast wherever you listen. Ninety two KQRS.